<laughs> Tim Hill, how are you? Well, well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I've managed to avoid COVID, so yeah. So you're here finally because before we got hit by COVID here, you yeah. were the guest that was booked in to come in like yeah. the week after, I think. Yeah, so it it's got to be. And the yeah, restrictions yeah. kept changing as well. Yeah. I was texting you going, oh, we have to put, yeah. put it back a couple <laughs> of weeks. And I was like, oh, maybe December. <laughs> and it's like, when it goes to the end of December, it's like, it's not going to happen this year, I don't think. No. <laughs> and it's no. just been like. It, it, it's been weird, isn't it? Yeah, and it, do you feel like we actually are going to get out of this now? Yeah, I think so. I think um, these new variant stats not worrying you. I I, c I think I'm kind of past worrying about it right. now. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know the way viruses work, there's always going to be a new variant yeah. of it, um, and we're just going to have to deal with it. It's not going to go away. No. It does um, seem like the vaccination percentages seem to be keeping the hospitalizations and the deaths down, even though the infections yeah. are going up. It's not. Yeah. It was it was quite relatable last time, whereas this time it seems to be quite. Yeah, you can see the trend, can yeah. you? And now it's it's very different. And obviously, there the government have they uh, the government have bowed the itch really mm. is to keep hospitalizations down, doesn't it? So yeah. As long as we can keep doing that, and I just the, the more people that get vaccinated, the better. Yeah, I, definitely. I, you know, and I'm not here for them, like government or anything selfish about it. No, no. I just I I don't get anti vaxxing I just. I was going to ask. That's one thing I was going to ask. So you you weren't like anti COVID or anything like that at no. any point. No, I think, I think it's ridiculous. It's an absolutely ridiculous premise. <laughs> like, it, I just don't get the Tim Hat Brigade. I just, no. I just don't. Um, it's, it's difficult to know what to do for the best sometimes. Because sometimes, yeah, it has been like you think, what are the government doing? Are they after too late? Are they after too early? I feel like I'm just a moron trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm just like, I don't know what to do for the best. I think they're never going to please everybody, no. are they? And they've upset everybody. You know, there's the excluded movement and things now, which is yeah. This, um, the people that are those freedom centres that couldn't get any grants or anything like that, and mm, yeah. you know, that that net unfortunately didn't capture them. Yeah. But ultimately, they did what they did in a really short space of time, and that mm. whole situation has just devolved. Um, I mean, let's face it, it's Boris, isn't it? Yeah. It, you know, he's the blundering potato. It's <laughs> the other. The other thing I have is like whoever. Whichever party is in power, whatever they do, the other side's going to complain about 100%. it. Hundred percent. Even if they're doing yeah. something right, they're still going to find pick fault in it. Yeah, they could give everyone diamond uniforms, <laughs> and someone's still going to have a problem with it. <laughs> on the on the opposing yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, they just. I don't think any party would have made a better um, a better deal out of it. They wouldn't have. No. I don't think they'd have necessarily done many things differently. They might have done some things better, but they might have done some things worse. Exactly. I think. No one's when been in this situation before. In, exactly. We can't when it all comes out in the wash, all of them would have done a very similar job. Yeah. It's yeah, I um, think so. it's it's been a very challenging mm. almost eighteen months, hasn't it? So the first time I heard about you was from Hannah Jackson. Yes. Do you just do did you supply coffee to the CrossFit people? Was a bit yeah, a bit, yeah. So Hannah went to the same gym as I did. Yeah. Um and yeah, I started doing a bit with coffee, fizzling a bit of coffee snobs. I can't remember how we got into it, but she recommended the coffee. Right. But then she also recommended, recommended you as a guest. Okay. So uh, that's, when okay. I that's when I wrote you down on my list. It took, it me, might a while it <laughs> took me a while to get around to approaching <laughs> you. But it might, it, yeah, it might because I don't have a filter and it might just be uh, <laughs> per personal amusement. But then I saw the coffee. Yes. The coffee kept coming on all my social medias and I kept yep. seeing people, different people tagged at it. I love Google ads. Yeah, <laughs> it works. So then, uh, then we we bought because uh, you saw the clip. Yes. You, so you came across a clip that we put out yes. of me and producer Pete from yeah. here. Just got, we just came across it and we were just like, yeah. was it, "What was it like to hear like two people who'd never heard of you before sort of discussing your product?" <laughs> it's it's kind of nice, but I was like, "Who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> They're local, and they why they do I care about they <laughs> think?" <laughs> <laughs> well, the normal stuff you get when people were uh, sort of sharing pictures and videos of it, they, there'd be barbells in the background and. <laughs> it'd be a, yeah, yeah. It'd be a weird sort of sawdusty CrossFit gym. Somewhere, yeah, yeah. But um, it's no, a different it's nice. setting. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's nice when you have a product that people like. Yeah. You know. So when did you start the uh, Amrap Coffee? Was the company? Mm. Or yeah, the company? it was. So Amrap is a is a CrossFit term. As uh, many reps as possible. That's the one. We had, I, we had to Google it at the time. I none I of us could claim that we knew what it was. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> um, when did I start it? I started it in. September, just before COVID. Nineteen, then. Yeah. So oh wow. I Why? That was Why? Why not? <laughs> I, I kind of. Where do you begin when you want to start your a, own coffee company? I have a, a bit of a problem in that I have an idea and I just act on it. <laughs> right. I don't. I don't. 
I don't sit down and, and talk myself out of stuff. I just mm. tend to just do it. And I like good coffee. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to find it sometimes because there's loads mm. of there's loads of roasters out there, and they'll all give you the spiel about it being you know the, the best tea in Vietnam. Or yeah. And it isn't necessarily good. Um, there's two different types of coffee. I mean, there's Arabica, which McDonald's use very well in their marketing. Oh, they're always yeah. yeah. Um, and Arabica is the better bean. Um, right. And then you have Robusta, which is ultimately from lower down. Okay. Um, so Arabica is uh, just grown higher up in the mountains, ultimately, and that, that grows the quality slower. Of it. Yeah, it grows slower. I think the beans are smaller, so the yield is is less. That's why it's more expensive. All that sort of stuff. Um, but when I started looking more and more into it, all of the big guys are using Arabica, but as a percentage of their their blends. Um, so mixing it with other stuff. Exactly. So they're mixing right. it with robusta and uh, that sort of thing. And I I found by completely by chance, just found a, a roaster that only did single origin. They'll only roast one type of bean, um, and and ultimately deliver that for you. And I went down and had a chat with them in Bradford, um, and it was the best smelling factory I've ever been into. It was incredible. It's not a big place, um, but they genuinely love what they do. Um, and when I'd had a conversation with them about what I wanted to do and what it looked like for me, just as a, a test, really. Um, it was a no-brainer, really. Mm. And single origin is, once you have it, it's so much cleaner. It's so much nicer. So why do people mix it with other stuff? Because it's cheaper. It's, cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. it's a bit like when you go to the, if you go to a restaurant and you know you have the Coke, and you can see the Coke coming out of the machine, <laughs> it's like <laughs> one bit of Coke, one bit yeah. of whatever it is, and another Sick, bit of Coke. It? Yeah. You can see it going out. That's not 100% Coke. Check but when you get it from like McDonald's or somewhere, like this definitely doesn't taste like Coke I've ever had before. Yeah, out of and a then can sometimes or a bottle. it's super strong. Yeah. And like you want to run home. I'm like, it tastes kind of nice, but... Not it's yeah. not Coke or it's not Pepsi. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's in a box. It's a syrup. Yeah, it's a syrup, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A yeah. pal of mine once got Sprite for one of those, and it took him half a cup to realise that there was no flavouring. It was just soda water. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, this, yeah, this tastes funny. Have that. That's just soda water, pal. There's no Sprite in it. It needs refilling. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's why that's why people do it. Yeah. So how then do you keep your costs down if you've got such a pure product? Uh, you don't. <laughs> Fair enough. You don't. Uh, you you kind of have. You stand to by your product. You have to, yeah. You have to. You either buy in in, in quantity, uh, and you know this guy's economy model, or you just have super high prices. Yeah. Well, to um, be fair, that was a conversation we had, but we bought it anyway, and then we we're like, mm. we can taste the difference. You can taste the difference, yeah. and I've always liked yeah. that reassuringly expensive sort of marketing thing. Where Stella Artois we did a really good work, it did really really well. Um, and it works because people are willing, to, if people want a good product, they're willing to pay for it. Yeah. And you kind of don't want those people that are looking for a bargain all the while mm. um, because they're the people that will give you a problem in the future. I think they're also the people who aren't bothered about like the quality of it. Yeah. Price rules. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's t there's it's a very different train of thought. And it, it versus, the versus people who love their coffee. Yeah. Who just like, and they want the best coffee. And the people that love their coffee love their coffee. And that's how I really got into it because producer Pete, obviously people in the music industry, live off coffee. Yep. Especially producers who are all like <laughs> producing, like yeah. mix, doing mixes and stuff. It's part of the process. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just really enjoyed the whole process of it. And yeah. Kind of given what I also do, it was good to actually do some high drive in, in the shoes of of other people as well, really. So was it, was it time consuming then to get it off the ground? Yes. Is it yeah. just you? Yeah, you have some help. Me. No help. No, just me. <laughs> Well, you did it, you did a good job branding wise of making it look like it wasn't a one man. Had band. a little bit of help branding, right? But th w um, that was wise, I think. Yeah. It worked. Oh, 100. I'm mm. probably more autistic than artistic, so. Um, Fair it's enough. Um, but we had to get. It's kind of the name's right. Is the the name of the coffee that I have? Yeah. I know I've I've said to you before. There's there's, there's a pin stuck in Amrak coffee at the minute. Yeah. Um, it it will come back, but I hope so. It's just um, it's just a timing thing. Really. Yeah, because um, you were doing, was it COVID basically that made you do that? Or was that going to happen anyway? Uh, no, 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 I was going to do it anyway. Right. Um, COVID didn't help. Yeah. Um, there's a few factors, to be honest. So one of them, well, and, and the main one is that the consultancy really got really, really busy. So yeah, so for, so what, what is the other part of what you do then? So my sort of main job, <laughs> if you like, um, I, I, I'm a business coach, basically. Mm. Um, 
I'm, I mean, everyone hates business coaches, don't they? It's fairly to be fair, a lot of people need business coaches, though. Well, they do, but they don't necessarily see that. So I do a lot of work with the, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and I work with um, SMEs, startups, that sort of thing, yep. um, and help them kind of, I suppose the blue sky thinking way of putting it is realise their vision. Um, but ultimately, and, and certainly in the last 18 months, it's it's really been about helping them stay alive. Survival. Yeah, just complete survival, helping them consolidate a position, pivot, which most of them have had to do in terms of product set or, or delivery. And what does that like mean that. then? And what, how do you facilitate that? What do you do? Well, we have to look at the business. So we spend quite a lot of time uh, just going through every little aspect of the business and trying to understand what, what works, what doesn't work. What do you need now? What you do not need now? Ultimately, yeah. yeah. Um, and how do we cause the right reactions going forward? Because businesses, uh, it's all about causing the right reactions. That's why we market things. That's why we talk to people. That's why we do everything. And ultimately, that reaction at the end of the day is tech. Yeah. There's so many reactions we have to cause before we get that end result. Um, so we, we were coming across a pattern of people going through the same stuff in yeah. COVID times. Yeah. So we so the LEP, which is weirdly based just a few doors down from you guys, What's that? Uh, local enterprise. Oh yes. Yeah. So they kind of distribute given money um, sort of um, and EU money as we've collated. Mm. So. Um, they had some schemes and, and one called a catalyst where they help uh, smaller businesses grow. So they send some like money in uh, and they we look at their business. We do um, do an assessment and audited where they could grow what they want out of it, which is smaller businesses. Um, and they'll all be the first to say, well, they don't spend enough time working on their business. Mm. They work in it. Um, yeah. And that's the biggest thing. And I, I do it. And I made that mistake with Amrap, to be honest. I wasn't watching what was happening properly i was just sort of getting stuck in and enjoying coffee which <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so that my that's my main job really and i've spent a lot of how long have you been doing that i've done it on the side for about 10 years right. um, and only in the last three four years has it become sort of my full-time thing you think it will be going forward 100 percent. yeah i love it i um, I've worked with companies with venture capitalists and, and products and stuff like that, and quite frankly, they're nothing more than a pain in the arse. Um, <laughs> you've just got you've, it takes months to get anything done. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's egos around the board table, and there's people yeah. just shouting up at each other ultimately, and it's just not a very pleasant place mm. to be. Um, but you can affect a positive change in smaller businesses really quickly. Yeah, uh, get things really done a lot quicker. Quicker, yeah. quicker turnaround. Yeah, it's yeah, like. Exactly. Um, Big ships in the sea take ages to turn around. Yeah. Whereas you've got a little boat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, they're just not as agile. Um, and to be honest, do you want to... This is a, a negative thing, though, where you product, so you, you, you ultimately affecting the bottom line of a, either a pension fund or some ultim already rich people. Mm. Does that matter? Yeah. Really? I kind of like the fact that I can make some positive change so recently, one of the, one of my clients' biggest thing was their business is managing them, and they're they're working seven days a week, pretty yeah. much all the while. And we spend months going through the business and putting things in place. And ultimately, all he wanted to do was to be able to have breakfast with his kids and put them to bed. <laughs> That's all he wanted to do. <laughs> he just wanted time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we've we've sort of managed to achieve that just just by looking at the business and it wasn't a hard project it's like working really. smarter isn't it yeah, ultimately yeah yeah it's exactly that yeah um, working th working on things that they don't need to work on really wasting their time and everyone does it we, we all do it whether we're self-employed PAYE whatever we all do it at yeah. some point but it's um, it's why I don't really buy into the sort of 5am success club and stuff <laughs> like that because you've got to get up at 5 hours in the morning and go to bed at midnight and doing something well yeah I mean, there may be a short period of time where you need to do that, but hundred percent, you know, you but that should be a, a, a long-term thing. Every everyone that's self-employed will say it's hard. It is hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Um. But there comes a point where you have to sort of take a step back and say, "Is this worth it?" And if you're doing ten or twelve, sixteen hours a day for a year, then are you doing it right? Then mm. you know, is there something going on there? And I know that there's circumstances where it warranted and it's needed certainly the last last year mm. um yeah we just you can't really compare the last year to anything can you no no 
it's like nothing any of us have ever seen, isn't it? It's yeah. very odd. Like, had you ever heard of the word furlough before then? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did they just make it up because no. they didn't have a word for it? <laughs> it's like, we need a word for like paying people when they're not going to work. Is that a holiday? No, no it's not, not, in this, not in this scenario. <laughs> Something else. <laughs> I don't know what. Honestly, I don't know, I don't know whether it was actually it's a thing. Uh, and I've heard, obviously, Force Majeure is the other one. Yeah, I've heard of that. That's that was in, in contracts before, because yeah, like, that's, that's like weather and stuff, that. isn't it? It affects whatever, yeah. you, whatever you've been, whatever you've signed up to do. If you can't do it because of weather, that's classed as force majeure. But yeah, furlough. Yeah. It's just a posh way of saying you're out of job. Yeah, basically. Ultimately. Yeah. So furlough is is that coming to an end? Um, or is it eventually, cha- changing? It's cha- I think it's evolving. It's it changes at the end of next month or something, doesn't it? Yeah, because it reduces. We're still adamant that things are going to fully open on July nineteenth, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what they've said, aren't they? So that would indicate people going back to work. Possibly. Yeah, I think they'll want people back to work, but there's lots going on at the minute around people, A, not wanting to, and... Um, Working from home. Yeah. Um, lots of people actually will stay that way. I think they will. I think there's going to be some very cheap office space in central Manchester, Edinburgh, London yeah. in, the, in the coming Companies years. are saving money. Thousands and thousands of pounds they're saving, but people work better from home. Yeah. I've always worked from home. Mm. Um, after literally after my first job in sales, I worked from home, and you have to be really disciplined because home to do the hammer starts at half ten, and you know it's a lot of distraction. Yeah, yeah. got to um, walk the dog, and yeah. <laughs> um, I completely lost my train of thought there. It's um, no, we're just working from home. Yeah. yeah, working from home. Things that are going to change. Will you, do you think it'll stay? I think it will. Oh, a lot of people have already got like really good setups at home. People's output is bigger. They're better. Yeah. They're, they're more effective. They can take little breaks yep. all the time and then just put. People work in different ways. Most most humans that I've ever come across in the workplace don't work solidly. They don't want to work solidly from mm. nine in the morning till five o'clock at night. They can't do it. Yeah. Physically can't. People work in sprints. Yeah. So if if they've got the freedom of being at home to do so, then why not? Yeah. Why not let them? Definitely. Um, and people do more. I um, think the companies will have found that out now. Or yeah. or now that they've got like a year's worth of people doing it, they'll go, actually, do you know what? It works. Yeah. There will be some, obviously, some of the banks and stuff. Like I think, is it um, Morgan Stanley, the CEO in, in the US, that's making some waves, shall we say? Oh, um, what's he doing? Oh, he's basically just demanded that everyone goes back to work. Oh. <laughs> but he's got a good a good proportion of his staff that have said, well, I, I don't want to live in, in Manhattan anymore. So they've moved to like Vancouver, uh, or um, work uh, remotely. Vermont, rather, not Vancouver, Vermont. Yeah, so they've been working remotely, and it's been uh, working exactly. But he doesn't want to pay them New York wages <laughs> when, they, when they're living in rural Vermont. Uh, um, money. So yeah, it's all everything all comes back to money. But yeah, it's just crazy time. So mm. when did you? What was your first job? I sold cars. Okay, <laughs> right. My okay. First sales job was selling cars. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, awful job. Awful job. I, I started it because uh, I needed something to do, um, and uh, someone said it's easy, and you earn loads of money. Um, I don't actually, I don't speak to that person anymore. So, <laughs> they, so, they, weren't, <laughs> so they weren't, they weren't right. No, no. Um, or does it just depend if you've got hard. the gift of the gab? I so think was it not always like in? I always feel like in those in environments, there's always someone who's doing well. Oh yeah, hundred percent. There's always one gold. But that doesn't mean it's easy. No, no. <laughs> in, I, so I sold Peugeot. Um, so it's really hard. It's really hard to tell that off in any way. It's Peugeot, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, can't, I can't make that sound glamorous. Um, <laughs> this car can nearly go a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Not sixty, and we still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird, weird. But it, it's uh, nothing against Peugeot, by the way. <laughs> My, first speak yourself. <laughs> My first car was a Peugeot. It was great. Fair enough. Yeah. Two hundred six. As far as first cars go. Two hundred six. Uh, 106. Yeah. The, the lesser model. <laughs> the <laughs> smaller one, of course. Mine was an M, showing my age now, mine was an M Reg Fiesta, which is oh 19, God. M is 1993 or 4. An M Reg Fiesta. And it still, still had a little choke. <laughs> mine like a cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I had a horrible maroon red one. Right. Yeah. And it's blue it like that awful. curtain. It was blue like that curtain. It looks like blue. something out of Last Year's <laughs> Summer Wine. It was horrible. Yeah, my, oh mine was 0.9. <laughs> wasn't even a one liter. <laughs> Not point nine. I didn't even know that was a thing. But so, like, when you were at like a junction or a roundabout, you had to like wait till the whole thing was clear. Because yeah. if there was a truck coming, you like put your foot down, and then nothing would, would happen. happen. <laughs> and then it was slowly kicking. There was a couple of times I was like, "Come on, <laughs> I've, already, I've committed." <laughs> but I had it for f- five years. Never let me down. Bulletproof. Started in the yeah. winter. Never didn't start. 
Yeah, a couple really of like normal things went wrong with it, but nothing major. Yeah. Never let me down, so I can't yeah. can't complain at the old Fiesta, which I is why they are one of the most is one of the most popular models of car, isn't it? Did it, aren't they stopping it at some point? Though? Don't they? Oh, are they? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I read so. I might. I might be completely uh, off on that. Uh, they're stopping the Mondeo. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah I did is. hear about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the Fiesta yeah, as well. well. Yeah. Might be Let us know. Yeah. Oh no, oh, the Fiesta. It's been there forever. Yeah. It's been there as long as I can remember. You've got to change. You've got to move the design. Normally, just change the design of it. Yeah, the front end normally. But I always, I often find that cars generally these days are all starting to look the same. Yeah, they're all sort of nicking ideas off each other and just. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm like, is that a Ford or is that? What's that? Uh, back in twenty years, twenty twenty five five years ago, I was like, that's a Fiesta, that's a Ford. Yeah, that's and a you Nissan, could tell from the that's rear a Rover. Light. Yeah. Literally, and now everything looks the same. And those uh, LED headlights do my head in in the mirrors when they're all sort of oh, yeah. changing colour and. You just have to just go for it. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> just just hope that they're not on your side of the road. Because <laughs> you can't see anything. I mean, no. I am one of those people at the moment. They are on my side because then I can see. Oh, you can see better, though. I, yeah. do, I do, like, everyone should have them, really, because you just... 100%. You can you see, you, you're, people can see you better, yeah. further away. Well, some of them, you can see through buildings in those cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know someone's got a BMW 4x4 that, like, when you turn, the lights turn around the corner. Yeah. So they sort of go sort of where you're sort of looking. I'm pretty sure that was a Toyota innovation. Oh, okay. Mm. About their only claim to fame. But one of Ford's best one is the heated windscreen, front windscreen. Yeah, that's a big but thing, isn't it? I think one of the maybe Jags have it as well. But then obviously I can never I never know who's owned by who, so that's why they've got so that. Often now. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> in in the world just generally companies just keep and you don't even hear about it, companies just gobbling other companies up. So this company that you used to think was owned by this co- company is now owned by this conglomerate. It, uh, it's <laughs> happening all the while. All the while. And then if you ever Google, like, who's suing who, it's like, Jesus Christ. Oh, there's all like sorts Apple of and Samsung, I've got 45 different yeah. lawsuits going on at the same time. <laughs> yeah, there's a Mental. crunch base. The crunch base is really good to watch because that has all of the investments in there and all of the takeovers and stuff like that. And they say why much is worth, who who benefited almost. Yeah. And, uh, it's got all of that. Oh, there's a nice little graphic in there. That's, uh, <laughs> it's good. But for in my world, it's kind of good. Yeah. Uh, good to know that sort of thing. So did you say that you didn't go to university? No. And was that through choice, or did you yeah, just, just want to work? Did you want to get a job? Or? Yeah, I just, um, I, I hate exams. Me too. I, I fall apart. Um, I'd like to think I'm, I'm not stupid, but I, I, I fall apart in exams, and mm. I just didn't enjoy any part of school. Um, Apart from the, maybe the, not even the banter, the fun side of it? A lot of it was shanter at my school, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair enough. W- it was very rural. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, all right. Some of it was good, you know. But academically, good. Yeah, I just, I just didn't enjoy it, and school just wasn't a lot of fun for me. Do you think part all. of that was down to having shit teachers? Um, some of them were great. Some of them really tried to engage you, and okay, that right. you know that was probably me just nubbing them off, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> It just it just didn't work for me. I don't learn in that way. I, I have to do things and, and have to learn for myself if that makes sense. And weirdly, as an adult, I love reading still. So you're I sort love. of self you're a self teaching person. Very much so. Yeah. Is that that so there's a word for that? Auto autodidact. Or, or you are an autodidact. I don't know. I might have butchered that, but that is now someone like. Pretty much, you yeah. teach yourself everything. A self-taught person. Yeah. Yes. Hey. I know my words. <laughs> <laughs> I know words. Um, o- yeah. Autodidact. That's what you are. Okay. So I'll you remember, I'll write that down. I, w- <laughs> I will. I will forget that. <laughs> I'll leave it up there so it you can <laughs> see you it. <laughs> 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 it will be ingrained on your <laughs> brain now when you go close your eyes when you go to bed. You see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know yeah, why. I, why I know that? I don't know why I know <laughs> that, but because I'm not, but. <laughs> yeah, school school just wasn't a thing for me. I didn't. I didn't. I, a lot of my friends went off to university. I have a few that did very, very well. Mm. But when I look back now and look at those that did go off to university, they've not necessarily made better decisions or done better. Mm. Um, you know, obviously the medical doctors and things like that. I'm really glad that they went to university. Mm. Um, but those that went off to do the normal stuff, like you know, the international business degree and stuff like that. And in fact, they're probably a little bit behind on their career path. Um, it probably sounds a bit harsh to say, um, but most of the successful people, mi- most millionaires, 
haven't been seen by Steve. Yeah, a lot of successful people they didn't they just uh, they just started like entrepreneurship at a young age. You just have to try stuff and, and yeah. one of my old bosses and he still uses the term uh, spinning plates. Yeah. It's just all about spinning plates. Things and that stuff fall off. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying stuff. That's a bit like you. Yeah, I'm I'm quite happy to just try. To just try stuff. I've already do this, but I'm, I think I'll start up a coffee company at the same time. <laughs> Why not? All by fair, myself. I could. I quite a problem. Sheila just said is it was a way of buying coffee at cost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and people so wouldn't yeah. have blamed you for that. No. <laughs> Can't say anything about that, but. Um, but yeah, university's not. I don't know. Do you feel like most people today, when they f- school, college, university, still haven't got. They've got academic qualifications, but they don't have life skills. 100%. Yeah. So it's, it's, like a a it's like a balance, isn't it? It's like, I have qualifications, but I want experience. But they won't give me experience because I want the qualifications. Yeah. But if you don't give me experience, you're not going to Yeah, so it's like a... It, it's a very weird world we're living in terms of that. Um, obviously, you know, when you look at those sort of recruitment ads and stuff like that, then they all ask for experience that they're just not going to have. Mm. And we're not going to get around that because recruiters have been doing the same thing for the last 25, 30 years and they won't change because it's been making money for 25, mm. 30 years. Yeah. Um, but no, I do think they have a big thing in America where they do Fisker schools and that is basically active all the stuff that you would, all those skill sets that we don't get taught at school. Not over here. You kind of have to figure out. And I know that in the US they do their own taxes and things, but there's lots of things they learn as from from P- pre-k which is elementary is ultimately um about life mm. all the little bits that yeah. we don't get to it like when i was 18 i didn't know how a mortgage worked i didn't know about interest rates yeah. how to use a credit card effectively yeah. or even in school like how do you change a tire how do you like check your oil mm. stuff that's gonna happen that you're gonna need to know in life mm. that's gonna affect you it's not even not even in the syllabus no but no. i learned this stuff that happened you 400 years ago it, or yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you just have to. You just have to crack on and do it. Yeah. And for some people, that's fine, but I do think that it causes some. But I think it would raise the general population sort of yeah. intelligence if they just got got taught basic I stuff. I genuinely believe it does in in the US, and they force um, sort of social skills and, and, and sort of mm. things like that. And have you ever met an American that isn't like what's really the gregarious? That's another word. Gregarious. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good word. <laughs> no. Um, like just like, hey man, how's it going? But they're all like it, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, act- I'm quite it's a shy like a cult- person. It's like part of their culture, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Whereas we're all like head down, yeah. walk past someone. Well, I'm still <laughs> getting used to um, moving up from the Midlands, where you can get from your front door to the office on public transport and not pee for a day. Right. Up here, I c- could tell you someone's life story <laughs> while doing that. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. Yeah, it's because we're all spread out, you see, so we don't see as many people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it, it, the further north you go, I think the friendlier it gets. Yeah, well, until you get to Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, then. Yeah, but <laughs> Fair enough. It's probably friendly for the wrong reasons. So did you? What t- when did you finish with school, then? Okay. Or education? 16. Right, so that's when you decided. I, I thought you were asking me for a year, then. I was like, I don't know. No, no, no. Just so then you finished... You just decided to get a job. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, I just wanted out. <laughs> Your first job was a car sale. Well, no, the f- first car was in. Was in the mili- the f- first job was in the military, but then. Uh, uh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. So car sales. So how how long did you do that for? Eighteen months. Okay. And, and I didn't kill a soul. <laughs> or sell a car. <laughs> 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 it's it's a weird. The thing is, you turn up for work and you turn up for work in this big glass box, with up to sort of eight other guys that will literally stab you in the yeah, back. Yeah, it's very competitive. And all those sort of sketches that you see on, on all the you know, sketch shows of people almost doing a, a you know, the fast walk, the marathon walk, who punches on this pitch. Oh, yeah, they sort of compete. Yeah, it yeah. does happen. And yeah. they will f- you can see them figuring out when's the right time to go and interact with that person. Mm. But they'll be, they're like meerkats. Yeah, they're all sort of watching. Yeah, <laughs> the same thing. I was at Willoughby Peugeot in Nottingham, and they had um, sort of a used car that was was raced, and it had uh, one of those apps on it, so um, drunkards couldn't see when it was, co- <laughs> when it was coming. Um, Burst through the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hello. <laughs> well, they were on the pitch, and and everyone would stand and watch them, and it's who blinks first, ultimately. Right. Um, 
it just wasn't it just wasn't a very nice lifestyle and he works six days a week mm. if you're lucky yeah um and it basically depends on how many you sell yeah you get a base rate but it dep- some some people do it differently so some dealerships will just give you a salary but they'll adjust that based on the number that you sell and yeah. then some will just give you a really really small base but my first base was six grand right so i mean what did you do with that now <laughs> struggled yeah struggled <laughs> Um, so then it was then hard. it was a lot of pressure to top that up so such by selling such cars. Such a pressure, but I realised really really quickly that you sell the add-ons. So I mean, finance was regulated now; it wasn't then um, as much. Um, but things like there's a thing called super dive, which a car dealer will sell you say three four hundred pounds, and it's all about fixing paintwork and sort of stuff. And I'm not that don't you know, don't feel touched, but. Um, <laughs> So that's a car, go on. So that's a car right now. <laughs> um, Sell me this pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, um, it costs about thirty pounds to do one job, and I realised really, really quickly that I could just, and I obviously made quite a lot on the spot. I made so we used to have two cars back in the day because they had a full general duty, and you'd have to cost price your car and rev and stuff like that, and you'd make quite a lot of it. Um, he sold mine really kindly. I wouldn't say old fashioned because I liked them and stuff as well. Mm. But I just went out and bought my own two cars and just made them up so I could show people, oh, this is this is how much it cost us. Uh, okay, right, yeah. And yeah. then because there's a visual, people tend to I believe get it. Bored with that. Yeah. Um, I've written it down. Look, it means it's real. Well, I used to leave them <laughs> in his office, so I just used to say, oh, I need to go and talk to the sales manager. Come back with one of my two cars. As well, <laughs> this is what we can do. Tricks of the trade. Um, but yeah, I, d- I really didn't enjoy it and. Um, I was lucky enough to, and I suppose the right friends, I fell into the into the region sales job at, at Mike Global. How old were you when you selling cars? 18. Yeah, 25. Right. 23. Yeah. So about 11 years ago? No, longer than that. <laughs> I actually don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'd, probably, I'd actually have to get my CV out. <laughs> Which I have right here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah 12, yeah, but yeah. Okay, so then what happened? Uh, Mars Global. Uh, so Dolmio, Uncle Ben's, okay, Pebble right Chum. Yeah. Um, are all of their flagship brands, and I went to work for the horse food one. Horse food, right, okay. <laughs> you uh, just saw an advert for a job. No, I, I, I knew a guy. So where ah, I grew up, um, where I grew up in that. Melton Mowbray uh, is one of their biggest mm. uh, pet food factories. And Waltham's just down the road as well, which is their pet nutrition centre. Um, his wife worked at Waltham. She was a scientist. She was very high up. And he was a sales director for Mars Horse Care. And um, we just had a chat. And I just basically winged at him for about 45 minutes about how shy car sales is. <laughs> and um, he, he said, well, we're sort of expanding. We've been, Mars have bought us because it was a very farmery, rural type business. It was owned by Dagetti, which was a huge business back in the day. Uh, and then it was, like, there was a management guy out and then it just didn't make the profits for a bit. Um, right. So Mars bought it because we've ultimately been to Mars. We really liked horses. And we did make phone calls. We said we could see billions of dollars. We can pretty much do what we want. <laughs> um, so she she bought that and then they, they started recruiting. And um, I went and did that. Um, I've had horses three years anyway so okay. it wasn't wasn't too much of a, a change yeah but it's really hard to start sort of stressing about so that's ultimately what you're selling yeah <laughs> right yeah it comes in different s- shapes and sizes <laughs> and that's pretty much what it is um, but my region was wales um so i used to drive from nottingham to wales pretty much every day wow yeah how long a journey is that depends where i was going but i tend to Cardiff's about three, three and a half hours down Nottingham, so you know, pretty early start. Um, and only to be ultimately mugged off quite a lot by the Welsh farmers and, and you know, shop owners because I wasn't Welsh. I was just um, gonna say because you're English, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. It's worse in the north, in the south, more metropolitan, shall we say. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I really enjoy I learned a lot at Mars and they gave me the opportunity to sort of develop kind of what I do now, if that makes sense. They're really into allowing people to develop their own, the right skill set for them, if that makes sense. Yeah. So if you don't 
buy in to or really enjoy the salesy bit of stuff because you're good at the strategic stuff, they'll support that and they'll help you learn that. Because ultimately, it's better for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, they really set me on the path of of what I do now. Like business-wise? Yeah. Yeah, they, they allowed me to... Learn the ins and outs of it. Yeah, they, they have a thing where you learn the job of the person above you and you teach your job to the person below you because you never know when you'll have to sort of step into that room. That's a good idea. Um, I don't think that's very commonplace. I think some businesses do mm. it without knowing it. Um, but if they knew about it and actually planned for it, then they'd have a lot less stress in the workplace. Yeah, but, but often I find people above have no idea what the people below them do. Ab- yeah, <laughs> and, it's so it happens and it's a lot. The, the higher they go up, the less they know about further down. Yeah, because <laughs> they don't care about no. certain stuff. But, yeah, but like they still demand stuff from them, even though... Yeah. That's why initially when I first saw that uh, the undercover boss... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's become a shit show now where yeah, it's so it's predictable. But when it first started, I thought it was a really good idea. People, mm. Bosses were generally getting shocked by what they were seeing at, at ground level. And it just obviously... Yeah. Made them change the way they uh, approach their staff. Well, it kind of still happens because pe- companies mystery shop themselves all the while. Yeah, I suppose any any any, any company should. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they they allowed me to sort of do what I wanted to do and actually allowed me to work with the businesses and and the accounts that we're working with and actually on a strategic level and say, well, we can do this for you, but we can help you grow your business and. I suppose the rest is history, really. Mm. Um, done some pretty interesting things since then, and, and I'm certainly an educational thing that's worked quite well. What happened after that? Did you get bored? Uh, no, I got I got to some of the biggest mistakes ever. I think I got headhunted. Oh, I like mistakes. I like. <laughs> <laughs> I got Everyone I got headhunted <laughs> uh, to go to a dog food company called Science Plan, and um, they brought loads of of nice people in. Um, How did they tempt you? Yeah, they they brought loads of nice people in, um, paid paid over the odds for everybody, and then made everyone redundant anyway because their plan oh. didn't work. What was their plan? Throw money at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that old idea. It, yeah, it yeah. was yeah. It, it was a weird one. So you, you you'd sit in front of the sales director and the MD. The MD, I'm pretty sure, didn't know what day it was. <laughs> he he was an American guy, and the Americans are the same thing. They just want to fix everything. And he literally did. He turned up in his sandals. That's the kind of like <laughs> he didn't. He oh, genuinely American. didn't know what day it was. Um, the, the guys that I worked with, but he's very gregarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but it just didn't work. Um, there's there's mm. always there's, for years there's been all sorts of rumours flying around as to what actually happened and who was really responsible for the short haul and everything. So, so what was their business model? What did they do? Same as same as Mars. So it's a hub and spoke system where they ultimately have regional managers and sales guys who go out. And talk to vets, veterinary practices, and shops. Right. Um, Science Plan's quite a, an expensive dog food, and they like to pitch for faith and science and, and professional. They still exist. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's quite so that just particular idea didn't. Yeah, work. it's owned by Colgate. Okay. Because why not? Who owns Colgate? Colgate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I know when you read packages <laughs> something owned by Coca Cola or something, you're like, oh, they <laughs> own everything. Uh, yeah, Col- Colgate's. Uh, Colgate you, you see diagrams of like all these companies and it's just yeah. like it's just like a big six in the middle <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like every other thing <laughs> is owned by these people once, they, once they get past a certain threshold of making like 600 billion dollars they're just like I think I'll buy these guys today and yeah. tomorrow I'm going to buy these guys you know you're big <laughs> when the competition can actually look at what you're doing <laughs> yeah so when you've got a problem they'll, they'll, they'll look at you but so you'll it's like Disney buying mm. Lucasfilm and, and yeah. Marvel and all that kind of just because yeah, why not? They make well, money. Let's own them. A, an example of a, a sort of a weird purchase is L'Oreal, obviously a huge cosmetics company. They're quite open about the fact that they test it on animals and things like that, or mm. have done in the past. Yeah. Um, please don't sue them. Um, but they bought Body Shop. And Body Shop are pretty big mm-hmm. on talking about the fact that they don't test on animals. <laughs> but they're owned by L'Oreal. Mm. So they don't talk about that anymore. Money talks, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. No, we don't like testing on animals. Oh, okay. How about this briefcase full of these paper bills? Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's like if you felt like Greek McDonald's was really owned by Greenpeace. <laughs> 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 Have you seen uh, Sea Spiracy? I, it's on my list to watch. I started watching the first five minutes and then I had to go and do something and I've never got back to it. You'd make that joke, but. 
it's probably not that far from the truth. <laughs> <I've>, multiple <laughs> people have said I have to watch it's, it. Yeah, I guarantee you'll say I, I won't eat as much. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the general consensus I've got from yeah. everyone who's watched it. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I mean, I'm not I'm not sold on the guy that presents it. He's a bit of a knob, <laughs> but um, but the premise of it is really interesting because he goes deeper and deeper and deeper into what he thought was going to happen, and it's just nothing like it. And yeah. it's just it's such a an eye opener. Mm, anyway, it's definitely one one to watch. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So then what happened? The and second the <laughs> chapter of your life. <laughs> this is your life. I told you it'd be boring. <laughs> um, I floundered around quite a lot, to be honest. Floundering's good. Um, some stuff going on at home. Um, and I realised that I needed to make some changes if I wanted to actually win. And, and two of the biggest inspirations in my life are, are my aunt and uncle. They've been quite successful. Um, certainly my uncle. Um, and I wanted their life. I pretty much do what they want, when mm. they want. I mean, they're old now, but they've but they've worked to that get to that point. Yeah, have that and freedom. I remember as a kid, you know, we used to just turn up and jam new jazz or mm. you know the Audi and stuff that we turned up and it was like, and they'd always put the hand in the pot. You know, when you go out for a family dinner and there's like, oh, good night, you know, people are going, oh shit, they're just flicking the bill, they just they just do it. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, and that that for me is the thing. I'm, I'm I am, and I'm not ashamed to say I'm quite um, materialistic. I am, and that's kind of yeah. what drives me. Okay. Um, I like nice things. I think it's good to have something to drive you to do stuff. Mm. A yeah. lot of people don't have no, no motivation to do anything, so they just sort of no. slip off. Yeah, it's what yeah. you need to do. So they, you know, I, I sort of took a step back, and I wanted to know where they were at, sort of my age and stuff like that. And and then it was kind of a big thing for me to move, really sort of drive into understanding what skill set I needed to achieve this end goal of win that I do now. And so I started sort of looking into the strategic stuff, really understanding what true business development is. Uh, and this is where I'm going to get geeky and boring. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to understand the intricacies of it. Um, spent a lot of time watching people because to my mind, I'd spent a lot of time failing. I wasn't standing out in that failure, ultimately, in, in, in my little brain. Um, <laughs> um and so I watched people for, for a while and understood what their habits were. And it's why I sort of attacked the 5 a.m. club thing, because if someone tells you they're up in 16 hours a day, they're probably not. Yeah, they're not doing it. On I never understood why that was particularly a thing to brag about. Not if it's you're doing a weird it, feather in the cap, isn't not it? Not if you're doing it all the time. It's like, yeah. uh, like for sh to achieve something, you might need to do that for a while. Yeah. And then you, then you yeah, exactly. have and a certain level of success when you've that work exactly. that you've put in. But then if that's if that's all if that's your plan, it's just I have to just work harder, work exactly. harder, work harder. Then you don't you don't you're not does it get to a point where you're not doing it right? Mm. Well, people talk about traders and they hold them on this pedestal because they think they're working twenty hours a day. Now my old boss worked for Credit Suisse and he sort of debunked that myth for me because he was like, You'd get in at ten to nine and you'd leave at thirty four seconds past five. You uh, and go out drinking. That's your life. That's yep. They don't work for twenty hours a day. They're not, they're not them people. Mm. Um, so I, I just wanted to look at the behaviours and 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 what people do to be successful in all their different sort of lives. Um, and I tried to overlay that into ultimately what I do now. And I think it's why I enjoy it because I get to. And I'm I'm going to steal a quote from someone called Tim Robbins. Yeah, I know Tim Robbins. Yeah. Um, saving people from the. You know, watching the mistakes that other people are making, yeah. understanding them, and stopping someone else making them. Because very rarely... People, very rarely people get stuck in a rut, don't they? They get stuck in patterns they do. and... They do. Which wastes a lot of their <coughs> life. Yeah, they do. And they can spend years hmm. on the same thing and in the same little spiral. So let's understand what that super rich person did to go to overcome that. And let's do it. And they don't even have to be that rich. Mm. Could be Doris's corner shop down the road. Yeah, but some people also also call su to be successful is just to be happy with what you're doing. Yeah, Which yeah. Most, I don't think most people are. <laughs> are. I, d I don't think most people enjoy their job. No, genuinely. They, they just consider it a job. Yeah, because you need a job to. But live. You have to survive, and that's that's the culture that we've developed globally, isn't it? You've got. Isn't, to there, isn't there a quote about uh, the definition of madness is repeating the same thing and yeah. expecting different results? Yeah. I don't know who said that, but. Can you find that out? I think it was Einstein. Was it? Okay, right. 
I don't know where I'm pulling these out from tonight. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. But must be the football. I've got a bit but of it's true, isn't it? And when you look at a lot of business owners and small business owners, they'll go in and they'll do the same thing day in, day out, and astronomically. And then they'll have that tough conversation with the accountant at the end of the year when mm. they're just sort of stagnated and not really doing anything. And what's the point in that? I mean, some people just want that. Don't get me wrong. Some people just want their business to just work. And if it provides them with the means to pay their basic bills, to do yeah. what they want to do. Go out on a Friday night. Exactly. And that's fine. And I have absolutely no yeah, yeah. qualms no. with that. Um, but most people want to have a surplus. They want to grow the business. They want to exit that business. They I think what you're getting at is a lot on. of people want more. Yeah. But they don't know how to get there. Yeah. Or they don't think it's possible. Where you Actually, it is. It is. I think just an outside eye sometimes. When you're in something all day long, week in, week out, it's it's hard to see the the wood for the trees. Well, I think it's also comfortable. Yeah. People get s- it's a safe environment. They're in their, their they like their routine. They don't. Mm. I think a lot of success comes from being outside of your comfort zone. It has to, at some point, it has to. Like I, what I feel a quote coming on. What did your uncle do? He was in uh, advertising. There you go. But there must be a point where he had to work extremely hard. Yeah. To be able to get to that point where he was impressing you with his flash cars. Yeah, I mean, he started out as a, as a nail salesman. <laughs> there you go. And he I wanted more. I mean, I, I talk about Horse Street as being boring. At least I get to go to places <laughs> where, there's, where there's horses, which is pretty cool. Um, a nail salesman. Imagine. Didn't know that was a job. Uh, yeah, I'd yeah. sell nails to someone. <laughs> I think everyone needs nails, but like. Imagine rocking up to 15 Travis Kirkland's in a day. Like, really? <laughs> But he, and he, d- he would need those new, new, new damn nails. <laughs> <laughs> See, he <laughs> bags straight Look in. at that. Well, how are they different to any other, any other nails we've got? These 4,000 varieties <laughs> of other nails. Um, they're not. <laughs> you should email Jordan Belfort and see what he'd do. Who's he? Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, uh, that's the one. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, he that's his thing, isn't it? Selling his paint. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think people do. do there is m- They do want more, but they don't know. They don't. A, know how to, but they also don't think they can. Yeah, and I think post-credit crunch, and I know I'm going back a few years, but post-credit crunch, even into the COVID period now, people are more risk-averse because we've had to protect That's understandable now. And, and I, I get it. We've just got to be clever about how we do it. Yeah. Um, there is ways and means. Like, I deliberately started AMRAP with nothing because I wanted to prove what I could have done. When you say nothing, what do you mean? Nothing. Okay. Uh, zero you must pounds. have to invest some money into it to get it off very the Very little. Okay. Very, very little. Um, just to, to get something up there. I mean, you can set up a website and it can have two weeks free um, and you can start to, to make some churn from that. And all you need is a, a few bags sold to start to, to make it look but like How did something. it go? It was all right uh, until COVID sort of... Well, no one was doing CrossFit or going to the gym, well, were they? Nobody so was going to the gym. So was, that, was that your demographic, your market, like yeah. physical fitness people? Yeah, well, yeah, because um, coffees, and here's where I'm going to upset a lot of fitnessy type people, okay. especially when I sit here this shape. This is going to be the quiff. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> um, pr- we've heard of pre-workout. And I'm yeah. sure you've all seen the videos of people doing pre-workout before they go, and they, you know they go bright red, and they tend to be huge. Um, you don't need it. There's something called Half Life, and I'm not going to go into it because not, not the not the video game. Understand it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, but the 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 period that the la- that lasts in the bloodstream is less than caffeine, right? And the peaks and troughs are different, and it's more beneficial to have caffeine. A lot of people, a lot of scientists would say. Um, the caffeine's much better and it's more natural thing to put in your body in terms of pre-workout. Now, they're two quite different, uh, obviously. Um, some people would fervently disagree and some people would would uh, 100% buy into it now. Coffee and CrossFit go hand in hand anyway. Mm-hmm. And it is a bit of a niche, but there's a lot of CrossFitters in the world and I wanted to, to do it in the US as well. But during COVID, I got super busy with the consultancy and making sure that to be honest, <laughs> did quite a lot of pro bono stuff just to make sure people survived and got yeah. the grants and stuff. Yeah. Um, because they're weirdly hard to find, some of them. Um, so just to make sure they got some cash coming in and, and helping them. And everybody started doing a similar thing um, during COVID. So I'm sure I'm sure you you know of people that have started, people call it side hustles and stuff. Um, 
and there's some really great businesses that have been born out of it. Um, but you just got to really aim hard. So mm. I can make pounds a bag with coffee, or I can go and charge a few hundred pounds an hour of my time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the priorities of the people that you're, you're speaking to, though, isn't it? Like yeah, it just... it. It was going well, and like I said, I'll, I'll definitely spin it up again. I've still mm. got all the IP, everything just sitting there in the background. It just wasn't the right time to do it. Do yeah. It at that yeah. Point. When you explained it, it made sense why it wasn't really. It didn't make sense to do that as well while you. Yeah, and and because you've got to have a certain amount of time to be able to put into it to keep it exactly. And when you're making that sort of money out of it, I've I've got to put food on my table as well yeah. as well as Absolutely. sort of helping other people do the same. So when you're making a pound a bag and you know when you start drilling into it and you're spending 80p to buy that bag of coffee in terms of yeah. ad, ad revenue or ad spend, it just became a bit of a grind, to be honest. And No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> hey. um, it just became a little bit too much. So I just said, look, I'm, I'm going to stick a pin in this for now. Um, concentrate on the consultancy, which yeah. to be fair... The time, the time dictated that you needed to do that. 100%. And it's... Um, uh, even the consultancy has pivoted quite a lot in the last 18 months just to move so I can survive yeah. as well as continue to do what I do. And I'll always continue to do what I do, but with these training courses, we just trained up now as well because businesses, bigger businesses are coming out and saying, well, actually, that's we've, we've still got these people that are training that are putting you through these courses and stuff like that. So that's that's great, and that's providing you with another, another revenue. But at the minute that's um, a more sensible thing to do than than have AMRAP and toil over Canva making <laughs> cool little posts for Instagram, which is fun with coffee and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. But Do people, yeah. does it seem to be getting a light at the end of the tunnel for businesses generally? Has it got any better recently? Or are we still in the middle of it all? I think it's better. Um, hospitality obviously still having a bit of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, really hope, and I, and I do believe that they will stick to the, the line, line item. item. Yeah. I, I, I can't see a first announcement. You know, Unless the deaths and hospital hospitalizations massive happens, go up, yeah. just like the infections are. That, that's the main difference, as, we speak before, as we said before, with the, va the vaccinations, like yeah. keeping that down, which is the main worry. Yeah. I mean, loads of people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have it, but if no one's really getting ill from it, exactly. No the hospital. Exactly. Well, uh, polio was similar, wasn't it? So everyone got polio, and then they had the vaccine and it took what 200 years to to eradicate polio yeah. so you know yeah we're at the but it only took it didn't take anywhere near that long for it to sort of not really affect anyone no. in society that much mm. it's still there because i think i can see us having covid for quite a long time I think it's it'll always be, be there it'll be variants and out. Uh, but these vaccines that we've which is the first vaccine mm. they've attempted seems to be withstanding all of it seems to be doing all right doesn't it yeah. i mean it's uh, certainly not i mean a variant but they're still highly spreadable but like I say, people aren't getting as, as ill from Exactly. Them. The key thing is people are just not being hospitalised. And yeah. I know people are dying and, and anyone dying is a, is a, is a massive shame, but it's going to happen for, yeah. for the foreseeable. I'm afraid these variants are going to keep popping up, so we've got to figure out a way yeah. of carrying on. I know that they're trying to put the flu virus, the, the flu vaccine inside the COVID vaccine. Oh, they? yeah, I did read about that, for yeah. For when we all have it, which, which is a great idea. For this, that's like this winter, Yeah, that will sort of top everyone up yeah it's a great idea and we're, we're coming into an age where we, we're supposed to get flu virus aren't we so yeah that's true am, <laughs> I, am i gonna get a phone call one day saying you've reached that age now <laughs> come and get a flu jab like, that's oh, the first no. step i think that's a toe in the water isn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> for the bus back <laughs> get a flu jab. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know i know we, you mentioned the government earlier but if if you move everything aside the success of the covid roll of the vaccine rollout and the way that's gone has just been incredible yeah i mean we, we, we first heard about the vaccines in like november december last year was it something like that yeah and it was pretty soon after that that the first i'd say the mm. first one was like just before christmas or around christmas time it started to creep into the bbc m morning bulletin didn't it and that woman i remember on, D on good morning britain that woman who was the first one to have the vaccine yeah was my around Christ christmas time I'm sure it was yeah and after that i mean what are we what are we now about four 30 odd 40 million if i both vaccinations. Oh, now? I think we're like 36 million or something. Is it now? Yeah. yeah. I think we're, you know, we're well we're getting past half the population who've had both vaccinations. Amazing. Which is, I mean, what, mm. six months? 
it's it's amazing. I mean, they're going to upset some people with COVID vaccines. That's for that's for Sam and Emily. But that I don't, I don't understand. Thing. Like, if I have to have if I have if you've had both if you've had both you have to have this an app that says yeah I've had both I, 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 mm. I've had both vaccines so I can go into this venue or whatever. What's people's problem with it? I don't. I don't, I, don't, I honestly don't know. Honestly, I think it's it's all about data and data protection and people get oh yeah get well, their messages in a twisted our way. phones that's our phones if you yeah and well, has been for many years your passport's biometric your yeah your driving license is your biometric. thumb on your phone yeah I, they've I, got I, it some all. iPhones have got your eye recognition yeah that's they've all got it data all. stored somewhere yeah. all, it, all it takes for them to get hacked well isn't it Ferris and Edmonds is like one of the most watched towns in in the country so they have like <laughs> facial recognition CCTV all this why why them have you, have you ever been? No. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them places where you drive through it. So you only you only go if you have to. Um, it's like a bit like King's Lynn. Right, okay. Um, but yeah, they, so they have a really good system. But that's everywhere now. That was yeah. like 15 years ago. That I think was the, pass the vaccination passport sounds like a good idea. I can't see why it wouldn't be. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you know that if Ev everyone's event where everyone had to show that, had yeah. both vaccinations, probably done a lateral flow. It's held on a separate system, so I I got mine fairly early because it was one of my clients because I spend a lot of time in a dentist's office, um, and just because I spend a lot of time there, it's we, a high we did until place. this place. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that was on the NHS staff program, but apparently everyone's on the same database, and if you phone your GP up and go, oh, I've, I've had COVID, or or ask them questions, and they're like, I don't know. All right. I don't know. <laughs> You'd um, expect you them to have know. to tell them. Yeah. That's weird. The one person that you would trust with your information like that is your but GP. You, but if you imagine the logistics of your GPs managing your vaccine mm. passport, it just wouldn't happen. I would just imagine the whole thing to be on the same system. Well, that would be sensible. That just complicates things. Do things like that. Like, because you hear about people who, like, people have died because they didn't get the prescription on time because they were moving to some, they moved GP yeah. and they didn't pass the right yeah. information and it's like how can <laughs> 2021 how can that be happening this in this day and age i think some practices still have paper notes <laughs> that is crazy I'd, I'd be willing to bet they do some of them and G gp surgery love to use faxes still faxes yeah wow. they, they love faxing people jesus they when, when i worked they for can fax off yeah I'm <laughs> when, I work, when i worked for a software company a few years back like between Four, four, just over four years ago, they yeah, I would speak to doctors and that about this software, and they're like, "Oh, I'll send you over a fax." <laughs> Why? <coughs> I don't think I've ever sent a fax. It must be fifteen, twenty years since I've sent a fax, and that was probably like, "Hey, I've written, I've written, I've drawn a picture of a knob and I faxed <laughs> it to you." <laughs> <Yeah. That's laughs> How cool is that? that? That's about it. That's like I've never actually had to send a fax for like good reasons. It, it's <laughs> one of the mo single most annoying things as well, wasn't it? When you rang someone and you got that number, you got that. Yeah, because yeah, you always had like, here's the phone number and here's the fax number. Yeah. I will never use There's that one fax digit number. difference. Yeah, it's usually like the last one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A nightmare, I don't. And then that going, there was like when pagers were a thing. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody there going, hold on, I've got a pager. I never actually saw one. I'm like, what does it say on it? <laughs> it just says. My brother bought a pager when he was about 12. And he had it for about two years, and nobody ever paid for it. <laughs> 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 That's one of those things like it's like it's the latest thing, so I'm gonna get one. He just wanted to wear it. I don't know. It's like why why hasn't um anyone fa uh, paged me? It's like did he give an, anyone your number? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how pages work. No, I don't. I thought it was like before mobile phones. Yeah. So so you could maybe if someone. But how do they get how do they get the, a message to you? Did you you ring a number? To have someone send a message to that pager. Can we Google how, how, I, well how do pagers I work? Because I mean, the doctors had pagers, and I would ring them up, and they'd be on their pager. So you'd you'd ring their pager number, and it would beep with a phone number on it, as if to say this person's trying to get hold of you. Yeah. They would go to the nearest phone and dial <laughs> it. See, I don't even remember. I don't even remember this. Yeah. That's, it, 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 it sounds it's ridiculous, doesn't it? It, it? it does. Yeah. Have you not seen Bruce Almighty? He keeps getting paged. By God, doesn't he? Oh yes, oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. It's like it, it's uh, it's as if this number trying to get hold of you. Pick up a phone <laughs> and ring it. Yeah, yeah, they were they were very popular, but I never had one, and I never knew anyone who had one. I just kept seeing them on TV and in films all the time. Here hey. we go. <laughs> hey, pager. 
even one, even ones that are like available now look old. They do, don't they? Most of our watches now. All, also known as a beeper, bleeper, pocket bell. That's a, that, that must be bell. American. That's the American. It's yeah, that was just pocket bell. You, that's not going to wash in the UK, is it? I'll just look at my new pocket bell. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be arrested or beaten up. Have you seen? Have you seen Ma- uh, Michael McIntyre thing? When he's talking about the, like the Americans have to like change what change the word of something to make it make more sense. Like we have pavement, and you walk down the side of it. They have no sidewalk. <laughs> sidewalk. <laughs> we have a bin. They have a waste paper basket. <laughs> it's because they had to put their own little edge on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What we got? 1950s and 60s. Developed in the 50s and 60s. Wow. I kind of skim read it, but nothing's going in. And became yeah. widely used in the 80s. Yeah, definitely 80s yeah. into <laughs> 90s. And probably, I would say mobile phones probably made them defunct. Yeah. Useless after that. Yeah. I think it's easier for them to see notes at the moment. Yeah, it's like, how do, <laughs> how do they work? How do you use a pager? Two people still use pagers. You know? <laughs> two, as of 20, as two million people still use a pagers, apparently. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was a universal wow, that one, it. Jinx. <laughs> what is it? Pages direct. <laughs> Pager. The fact that, that has to, that's a Google term. Oh, is it radio based? What? Yeah, but so is mobile. Listen phone, to just so one station all of the time. A radio transmitter broadcasts signals of a specific frequency. What? Uh, oh, is it a tap? But how do you <laughs> use it, though? Mm. I feel like we've gone down a rabbit hole. We have. Speak pages pager to listen and recorded voice message. So that was what I thought. Yeah. Someone would like it'd be like an answer answer mm. phone on you, and you'd like ring the number, and it would leave a yeah. message, and they'd be able to listen to it on that, or yeah. it would translate into text. But they were they were always reading something. I remember they'd mm. get a pager, they'd look at it, and they'd read something and go, "I need to go." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I always wondered what is on that screen that says they have to go. They or they just to twist the hip and look at it and, <coughs> and run out of the room. Man. I'm not learning anything here. No, no, no. <laughs> that's enough of that. That's enough of that. But yeah, that was that was a thing. <laughs> I had my first mobile phone in 1998 or 99. I can't remember. I think I was about the same. And yeah, I have the same phone number today. Really? Yeah. I bet there's not many of those people who say that. No. It takes a lot of years. I've had three phone numbers. To be, I, I have the same number, but to balance that out, I lost my phone on the day I got my first phone <laughs> in a taxi. <laughs> But I managed to get a new phone and keep the same number. Oh, it used to be a right palaver back in the day, trying to keep your number when you change phones. Yeah. Pretty easy now. Oh, no, they had this code that they had to give you. The put code. Yeah, that was it. But they like they used to hold you to ransom. Yeah, they didn't like it, did oh, they? Oh, it's going to yeah. take three weeks. And, like You knew you didn't have three weeks to wait, so they just started throwing all these. But we can give you this. If you stay <laughs> with us, we'll give you this. Oh, God. The put code, yeah. No, no idea what that yeah. stands for. I think but they still use them, don't they? But yeah, it's but a lot you faster. I think it's done auto. You, ch- you, ju- you sign up a new contract and it's all done automatically, I think. As it should be. Why should we, why should we have to bother with that? That's weird, isn't it? But yeah. Who's selling that? You know what you were saying? Oh, actually, that's what I was going to ask about. You were saying about what makes people successful. I'm sure there's a thing where a lot of the world's most famous people always dress exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I think one yeah. of the examples was Steve Jobs. Always used to wear the, the pants with the gr- a black sweatshirt. Zuckerberg does the same all thing. the time. Yeah, because I think it like they can't. Make <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that was what I was going to say. It's like you, they become recognisable. Yeah, because they're always dressed the same. Plus, yeah, just like, like he opens his wardrobe, he's got well forty-five of the same outfit. <laughs> well he doesn't even look. Doesn't even look. <laughs> that's why he says he does it, isn't it? But I think there's been a study of like a, it, it turns out there's been a few people. But it turns into their brand, doesn't it? So yes, it becomes as part of their image. Elon Musk's brand is as a distributor, isn't he? So he mm. likes to go on Twitter and that sort of thing, and he just likes yeah. to wield his power. Ultimately. Yeah. Zuckerberg, mm. you know, you'd know Zuckerberg after that if he did the way he dresses and the same. The world's most nerdiest nerd. The same as Steve Jobs and things like that. If you yeah, they have an Im- they have an Im- yeah. image. It's not just them as a person; it's like the way mm. they present themselves. Yeah, and it, I think it's all about branding. It's it's their brand. It's just. Branding. The more recognisable they are, the more yeah. they are. So there was someone at some point must have figured it out and mm. said, stop changing your clothes. Or like they change their hair, their clothes, so it can look completely different. But if you come to recognise someone, I don't know, is it an element of trust? If you keep seeing them, they're, they're always the same. You come to... I think, well, it goes back to the comfort thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. So maybe. Yeah. But then most people wouldn't have access to people like Jobs or Zuckerberg because <laughs> they just don't. They'll have their team around them and people that rich and that 
higher up just don't they have a little yeah. team around them and they just don't really interact with anyone else. No. Have you always been a lone wolf then? Pretty much. Pretty much. I like I do like team sports and things like that. Um, but, but in business though. Yeah. You're always like I want all the spoils just for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not not so much like that. Well yeah, it might be like that. But <laughs> um I I work better on my own to be honest. I get frustrated. Um at being brutally honest, I get frustrated by other people. Are you um, perfectionist yourself? Um <coughs> not a perfectionist, but it, if I can do it, why would I get someone else to do it if that makes sense? Yeah. Um I was just thinking some projects get to a point where like you need help to maintain it or yeah, just um, take it a different direction or I think certainly the consultancy will get to a point where I need to bring other people in to do various mm. things around it and that's fine um, and it I'm not a micromanager or anything like that but I, I just like to have because I can be disciplined with myself and having other people around you adds another dimension to that and making sure that other things are happening and I don't think you need to micromanage if you train people properly no not at all or if you, you pick if you recruit right and pick the right people if you if you happen to micromanage people then you get the wrong people yeah ultimately yeah um, I agree with that and that you know you'll you end up investing more time in them than you need to yeah you need to just pull the plug on it and start again recruitment's so hard yeah I can imagine it's so hard I'm certainly at the minute like, uh, if, like if, if you have to if I had to start it would be so difficult to, like, in an interview or in a short space of time, figure someone out. Well, there's the thing, isn't there? So people, they do their research now, obviously, on the, the company and, and even the person mm. that, that's interviewing them, and then they change who they are. They say what you think they want to say. Yes, and, that's a big You know, they use all the buzzwords, and, and people say it's about three months when people start to revert to type. Um, you see it a lot in sales, to be honest people just change completely over the course of like three months and this person that was super bubbly and really fun to be around yeah, but the job just grinds them down <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. especially it's in like farmers. telesales or something yeah. like tedious repetitive it's all those well farmers. Ha, you can't say it you can't stay cheery for that surely no, no. I, that's the sort of thing i couldn't i think it's the same for walls i like um i like to do different things and i think that's why i like i like the strategic thing i like the fact that i have a number of different clients um, I like things with multiple dimensions in terms of projects. Like, I worked in, I worked for an educational business, and I fell into a project called the BBC Microbit. I don't know if Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the BBC Microbit is a news unit version of Raspberry Pi, and it was developed by the BBC and a load of other people um, with the skills gap in the UK. So we're short of engineers and coders and all that sort of stuff. Um, so they did that. Apparently, they needed to build seven people. I don't know if you heard BBC Micron had some people. I've heard of that. Yeah. So it's a big thing. But I remember the was that the BBC computers as well. Yeah. I remember having those at school. Yeah. And we were supposed to be doing all this stuff on it, but we just played dog fight. Two planes like going. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, it. The BBC Microbit was the new version of that. Right. Ultimately. Okay. So it was a credit card size um, single board computer um, that was designed to teach the kids how to code and. I went into this this business just to do sales for this education thing after my floundering around and they were a partner on the project and I think they were just right place, right time to get yeah. into it. But mm. I ended up ultimately just working on that for three years and selling millions and millions of microbits around the world. Um, Brilliant. And it was just really cool because I was just allowed to do what I wanted. The BBC was just like, yeah, sell it, sell it to wherever you want, really. Because <laughs> um, they'd, they'd not even considered that they could have can we pull up a p picture of a BBC computer? Like the original one? Yes. <laughs> have, you s do you know, have you seen them test? I've seen them, yeah. Not the original one. That's them. Whoa. There they are. Yeah. I am an old man. I am an old man because I remember those and I remember using those when they were current. <laughs> yeah. In the 80s when I was a child. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. Look at the size of that. <laughs> yes, this is a computer. BBC Micro. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Accept. Oh, he does not accept. I do not accept. I do not conform. Where is the picture of the thing? <laughs> <laughs> I clicked on this paper a picture, <laughs> not words. Uh, so, yeah, there we are. Wow. Yeah. That is old. That was back in the day. That was... Microsoft was in the early days and IBM back then. Yeah. Yeah. Chess. I remember that he was playing chess. Not that I ever... I can sort of play chess now, but I've only recently learned how to play chess. But I just remember that was a big... That was... Actually, I don't... I don't Apart from dogfight and chess, I don't actually know what they can do. <laughs> <laughs> I know there was like there was basic 
programming things that you could do. Yeah, on so that's that. ultimately what it was. It was to sort of promote and and engage kids with, and it and it did work. It did sort of produce a generation. Yeah, I remember there was some coding that you had to do in order to get the games to work in the first place. Yeah. It wasn't just like plug and play like it is now, yeah. but that's kind of what actually set me up because I I love computer games and stuff. Okay. And built PCs and now now I'm console mainly, but that's what started me off mm-hmm. down down that route. But some people just weren't interested. Yeah. Stuff. And I remember like the first computer we had cost like a thousand pounds and it had like two megs of RAM. <laughs> 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 it was like this big. Massive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. I remember going to like, com- do you ever go to computer fairs and buy no. memory cards and graphics cards? No. Oh, I used to do it all the time. See, weirdly, I wasn't into computer games in school. I oh, okay. Was, I was, I played rugby at school. Essential tool now, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that's what this sort of My Computer Project is about because Raspberry Pi has been a thing for actually quite a while. Yeah. Um, but teachers were absolutely shit scared of it because of the amount of work they had to do to make it as a decent thing. Mm. So the beauty of my computer kind of has a bit of instant gratification. It's designed for kids as sort of 11, 12, 13. Um, so yeah, that, that that was their sort of solution. And weirdly in the UK... <laughs> I remember doing stuff like that. Little, <laughs> little <laughs> tiny microchip thing. Yeah. But you can see it's just, it's really rudimentary. It's, it's mm. really basic things. But... It did all right in the UK, but places like Sweden, Norway, um, the US. Um, I went to Serbia to talk to the parliament about it, which <laughs> was a really weird experience. They still have tank tops on the streets. Wow. It's, it's mental. Um, <laughs> they put us in this really nice holiday in this big glass fronted holiday, and it looked like a spaceship in the middle of, of the city. And they were like, don't go out. Just don't go out with oh. those. We were like, really? Why? And we thought it was people, but no, you'd go, you'd, me being the asshole that anyway, um, <laughs> there's like a pack of stray dogs following me down the street. <laughs> 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 it's like, I don't know if this is brilliant or not. <laughs> but it's so weird. But yeah, the micro bit made it, it kind of pushed my career forward quite a bit. It started getting a lot of recognition and a lot of um, sort of high power people. And, and just because of, I suppose the risk. Because your name just became associated with that, so. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's really. get him. He speaks in sentences. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, no, it was, it, it was really it was nice to make a difference with it, to be honest. Because mm. um, it's now in Iceland, it's part of law that children get at least a micro bit when they get oh, right. to ten. All of them get one, um, which was a really big win. Yeah, um, I can everybody. imagine. Um, so yeah, we w- went all over with it really. Um, and it's it's like the Pi. It's it's not as powerful as the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. I mean, Pi powers so many things. Yeah. Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Mayflower autonomous ship? No. No. It's amazing. So, obviously, the Mayflower, the one, the ship that went to the US. Google's getting a battery <laughs> tonight. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Trying out a tight stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. They built an autonomous Mayflower, ultimately, to make that same journey. It was shit weird, but it's, uh, it's full of Raspberry Pis that it controls. Wow. It's been eight months since we've sat in the studio and done this. Wow. Yeah, feels feels a bit slow. <laughs> oh, it's just. Oh. But yeah, I get a bit geeky with it now because I, I I like the fact, and that's like I say, that's it's it's close to my heart because that's where it uh, kind of pushed me forward into people. Certainly, people in the part of the XP world and and bigger people knowing my name really. Yeah. And having some cre- proper credibility as a as a consultant. He's done a thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean Let's I write his name down. I don't have millions in the bank yet, but I've done something. Yeah. If that makes sense. And that, to me, is really, really important. Going back to what you are saying about recruiting people and employers, I bet social media changed the game. Massively. People yeah. always look at, so like, y- your uh, potential employers well will look you up on social media. people have been fired, haven't they? I mean... Yeah. Or not gotten jobs, because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, at what people do. But then people want to be influencers now, don't they? Yeah. They've, they've but it's what you were saying about people say certain things in an interview. It's not not really them is it no, like 100%. they're just saying because a lot of interviews are all they're looking for is they're just waiting for this person to say this word that keyword right they've said that yeah or they've said this phrase or they've mentioned this topic yeah if they've ticked all them boxes they're not even listening to what you're saying really they're just like oh he hasn't ticked all them so no they s- they this person s- did though even though they were a knobhead they use a star <laughs> system don't they so yeah I something like that um, situation i can't even remember um but it's an acronym isn't it and they score you on it yeah Rather like than you say, not really get the to know the person. The person can, complete, can be a knob, 
but because they've scored high, they'll get free spin. And someone could get a heads up on that and know. Someone could tell them what they need to say. Yeah. You need to mention this and ma- make sure you say this mm-hmm. word, this buzzword, this keyword. The recruiters, the co- I think all the best interviews that I've ever been in are the ones that just turn into conversations. Yeah. Where you just feel like all, all you needed was a coffee or a pint. Yeah. Because you, you, you need to get the picture of what is this person going to be like long term. Can I get on with them? Yeah. Do they have a work ethic? Yeah. Are they employable? Exactly. Not the same keywords. Oh, and also what you were saying about um, exams. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, that's another stumbling block. I, I, I can't, because I think it's discriminatory against people who can't co- pick recall information off the top of their head. Mm. Because w- it, when you get, w- what job in life are you not allowed to look something up when you're doing your work? Yeah. Someone's asked you to do something. Oh, I don't, what, what was that thing here? I'll just look it up. Mm. Oh, yeah. And you carry on with, y- with your life. It's like, no, you must recall this off the top of your head now or you fail. <laughs> that's the only, the only time you have exams is the exams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, but most of it, a lot of it you don't actually use in real life. Anyway. No. The um, exam situation never reoccurs anywhere else. No. It's like you can't, you don't actually go into a job and a g- constant exams. Mm. It's like, no, you can look up whatever you want. If you don't know a sum, you can just get a calculator. I Every s- device comes with a calculator, so it must be intended to use <laughs> them. <laughs> I spoke to someone the other day, and he was, so he he does what I do, um, but he's about 20 years ahead of me. He does a lot of uh, manager chair work. And he'd been through an, in- an interview, as, as interviews you tend to do through the chair's way. Um, and they'd asked him for his, his sort of exam statistics. And he had done some interviews, and he told me that he used to do them. And they were like, no, 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 we need to score them. Yeah, GCSEs and stuff. Yeah, well, he, he's too old for that now. He might have done A-levels. But still, why? Would <laughs> why but why does it matter? No. After your first job, why does it matter? Yeah. Unless you're going into, s- like, medicine. Or, or education, maybe. Educa- well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but why, d- why does it even matter? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Even in education, once you've passed your, once you've got your degree and got your teaching qualifications, if you've got a GCSE, it shouldn't matter. Yeah. You could g- be going to be an art teacher. It's like, it should be like, what is this person like as an employee now? Not exactly. wha- what are they like academically, because they've, mm. they've got a job, so they must be okay in the first place. Is it a decent human being? Yeah. And that's the main question you have to ask yourself. But I think we've all recruited people with kind of... And that, well, that makes a difference with some people, companies... It's obvious why they have a high turnover of yeah because they just they just don't do they just do the bare minimum or the management structures or the manage or the rather the managers are a problem yes um, if we so people come in and go I hate this guy I'm out here yeah <laughs> the next person yeah. same thing but people manage people in the, something I notice a lot when I go into companies is that the sales managers for example will manage everybody in the exactly the same way they won't look at the type of person they are. And understand what their personality is, mm. what their triggers are, what really floats their boat. And something Mars does is something called Gallup Survey, and it's a bit geeky and it's a bit strange agent survey. One of the questions they always ask is, have I been really praised by my line manager in the last seven months? What they're actually asking you is, have you been like really loyal for those seven months? Mm. But I suppose the point I'm making is that ultimately people just want to manage in their way and everyone has to fit that mold. Mm just trying to force a square peg into a round one and it doesn't work no and not not in today's world where we're all more aware of our mental capabilities and our mental health and what we need and you know that sort of stuff so when i do train with my managers it's all about people who get my personality it's a bit like football managers you've got to yeah. be a good man manager you've yeah. got to be able to take individuals and like meet their needs sometimes yeah as well as like i find the best manager like firm but fair yeah so they'll yeah. let you I don't know, yeah. have a half a day off because you've covered these shifts or you've never been off, you've never been ill or you've got a good track record. Mm. Bit of give and take, whereas some people are just mm. like, it's my way or the highway. So how, I think, well, I think the question we all want to know is how how someone should manage Kane because he looked like a total caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Scored tonight, though. He did. I think he was just tired. He looked tired. He looked really tired towards the end. He was tired from fe- February, really. But I don't think, well, he finished <laughs> top scorer, he's finished top scorer in the Premier League and he had the most assists. Yeah, he's got G... Uh, whatever his name is, feeding him all the while. Plus, he Harry Kane he goes and gets it when he's got a spurs shirt on. He's great. I don't know how this is descending to football. Right? All of a sudden, that, that's what yeah. we do here. That's what we do here. It's, it's fine. The, it's, it's what we've programmed to. Yeah. <laughs> it's football. You football switch. Time. We never know what subjects coming next. But he comes to get it, doesn't he? And he's yeah, he drops deep and then he goes back. But that's fine. But I, England's different. Like they're not. They, everyone knows how Harry Kane plays, so they should be aware of that and be able to sort of accommodate him at that level. But it's a team of superstars, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But and I mean, but yeah, but it worked. They did it in the World Cup. He got to the semi-final. He was a top scorer. Yeah, yeah. 
He's the one of the very few players who scored twenty one goals or more for five seasons in a row in the Premier League. Mm. Oh, that is a that's a that's a proven world class goal scorer. So mm. I think it's fifty fifty. I think he maybe hasn't quite been at his best, but also I don't he hasn't been getting any chances. No. We haven't got it until Jack Grealish comes on the pitch. Well, true. <laughs> I feel like Ashley Newton would probably probably be playing with a cane. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but <laughs> it's going to be. Oh, have we, d- have we found out who we're playing in the quarter final? Uh, that was the next game. Oh, was it? Look yeah, it up. look it up. Look at the scores. I wonder what the viewer numbers were for that. I keep typing Four. Euro 2021. For what? That game? Sweden, Ukraine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, just England players just weren't wondering who we're going to get. 1-1. Uh, one, one. That's one all. Minutes. Okay, fair enough. So uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Is it going to be one of those? Is that what, what comes? Next? Yes, we're playing the winner of that game yeah. in the quarterfinal. Okay, right. Did you watch the expanded fixtures match? Yeah, <laughs> it was mental. Yesterday, both yesterday's games. Yeah. Well, I turned off at two one and thought. And then my friend came to me. He's like, "It's extra time." I was like, "What? I've missed four goals." <laughs> <laughs> I remembered that there was football on, and I looked at the score and realised it was like 115 minutes in extra time. Yeah, like three all. And I go, oh, I, go, I think I'll turn this on. You've dropped off. Th- you've dropped off football completely. You have, Pretty you? much. When yeah. I first met you, you were fairly, were fairly well into it. Was I? Yeah. Maybe because I played. I used to play quite a lot. Uh, okay. Really. Not really anymore. Um, yeah. I dip in and out though. To be fair. Okay. I'm I obsessed d- with football. According to my missus, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I watch match today. I like match today because that's the exciting bit. Yeah, match today is good. Yeah. Um, obviously, the Euros is on World Cup's on, so I do like it, but I just don't get as involved as I probably should. Well, we're, in the, we're, we're at the business end of it now. Yeah. yeah. It's the same as me. It, when, it, when I watched the highlights of the games from yesterday, it was like, oh, why haven't I been watching all the football? I know, yeah, but to be yeah. fair, the group, the group stages weren't that interesting. They were pretty boring. The oh. last, uh, a few of the last third games were quite good, and then this knockout round's been amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, but then yesterday, obviously, the France Switzerland was going on, and then Andy Murray's playing on centre forward. Yeah, I was Wimbledon. flicking between the two. Yeah, I thought he was dead. <laughs> where, where did he come from? <laughs> He's like, is he still alive? Yeah. <laughs> no, he played quite well. But people are getting, like, it's like most things, people are getting carried away. Like, yeah, he's, he's won the first round of Wimbledon. Don't, let's not get too carried away. And then yeah. when I was driving here after the England game, because obviously the final whistle went, I turned the TV off and I came straight here. Um, I was listening to Talk Sport, and there was two commentators here there. One of them were getting like, emotional about this game. Was like, oh, he's <laughs> well enough. He's, and I was like, we've got through the first knockout round. Come on. Yeah. It'll be so, y- it's England, isn't it? It'll be some th- someone ridiculous like the w- Ukraine that knocks us out. We're either going to get to the quarterfinal or the semifinal, and then we'll get knocked out. Mm. That's law of averages would tell us. I don't think we've played well enough to. We're going to have to play a lot better than we have been playing to get yeah. past that. Yeah, we have to start start a lot better and do a lot. Harder. Considering the teams the teams who are still left in it, with Belgium. Czech Republic, Spain, yeah. and Switzerland. Yeah. When you think about it, actually, there's not that many big hitters left, is there? No. We can avoid Spain, though, can't we? Mm, I don't know how it works. I've not looked at the... I need, I need like, a diagram of... Uh, yeah, a route to the final. Italy, oh, they're, they're Italy are still in it as well. They're looking strong. Oh, it, yeah, Italy. Yeah. Oh, Italy-Belgium. What a game. Spain, I think Switzerland. Belgium might win. Yeah. Win that. That could go either way. Oh, yeah. some, some juicy games. We get a lot of American listeners. They're gonna, they're gonna really? They've all switched off now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're talking about soccer and we've it's attacked the American yeah. way of speaking. And <laughs> and <laughs> a bit of gregarious nature. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be gregarious than reserved, as the British I don't know, I'm quite, portrayed I'm, us. I'm quite a shy person. Um, I struggle, like, even coming Socially? Through, yeah. Yeah, I, I go for quite quiet. Even coming through this, I was a little bit anxious about it. Um, you rela- you're clearly you're relaxed now. <laughs> <laughs> very, well, I've not started swearing yet. <laughs> you can <laughs> swear if you want, it's fine. Very likes of, of help. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> it's the mood. <laughs> Did you, were you choosing colours? or? No, the, the room itself is all already here. So we just, we brought, we've everything else that's in it, we brought it. <laughs> all the equipment. So yeah, so eight months ago since we... Yeah, we did three episodes here, and then that final lockdown hit, and it was just like, oh my god, because we initially like joined forces with these guys in March 2020. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like we had a little press release, you know, we we're going to be on all, all the local press, and then lockdown happened. But well, it was just before that we were like, hold on, let's not do anything yet because we, we could announce it, yeah, and then not be able to do anything about it. 
Yeah, so it would be like a waste of announcements for them, like just waiting. What cause you, did you guys feel like it was just going to be a few weeks at the beginning? Yeah. I've uh, got the PlayStation out, and I'm shit at computer <laughs> games. <laughs> I'm awful at computer games. And I even got that out. I was like, yeah, I'll just get this for a few weeks. Yeah. And then it went on. And on. <laughs> and on. And on. Um, yeah, it's weird. And then you'd go out, you know, you'd go and walk the dog, and you'd see people, and you're like, well, I just don't like this. I saw someone. What's going <laughs> <Yeah>. on? <laughs> Guess what? I saw someone when I was out. <laughs> it was weird. But see, and then making sure that you were distanced from them. Yeah, like at first it was like, whoa. Yeah. Like moving away from anyone, getting anywhere <laughs> yeah. near them. And then, uh, masks weren't a thing at the beginning either. No. Boris Johnson was bragging once about shaking everyone's hands and not wearing yeah. a mask. <laughs> <laughs> and then about a month later, you must wear a mask. <laughs> so. But now, because, I don't know, you go to Sainsbury's, you lean across someone back in the day, and, that, and it was fine. You know, I don't know. It's a bit annoying, but. Slow Doris is taking yeah, over yeah. to some pasta, and you can really easily go, I'll get rid of one and, and be off. Now. It's like a personal attack, isn't it? If you lean across someone to mm. get something, it's just weird. The whole behaviour's definitely changed, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Do you think there's going to be street parties and things on the nineteenth? Or hell yeah. Probably. Well, there's still street parties now. I keep I keep seeing illegal this, illegal that's been yeah arrested and local councils were inundated with um, requests for like street parties for the twelfth of June. Oh, that was the initial date when we were supposed to. Yeah, 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 that was the initial date, and yeah, I heard months I mean and months ago from you know people that were just what, applying to. That would have been by then if, it, if people. Yeah, were yeah. That for a it's like holidays. I've not. I'm not desperate to go on holiday because it's just everything's just too up in the air. I'm, I'm not. People bothered. will literally, if you give them a date, <laughs> I'm booking a holiday yeah. within seconds. Gone. That that that, that venue is just everyone's there. Yeah. It's like I'm. I'm not. I'm just like. There's too many variables for me. So obviously they're changing the list and stuff, but also people are people are getting to the airport and they haven't got the PCR results. Yeah, so they can't fly. Yeah, you know. I also I don't get this traffic light system. Like, I think somewhere it should be green, or it should be not on the list. Yeah, yeah. You know, this amber thing is like, well, it's a bit ambiguous. Like, do I go? Do I not go? What, happen, what does the amber mean? What happens if I go? I, d I, d I think it's there to appease people that are just genuinely desperate to leave the country. But I, d I agree, I'm, I'm just not bothered. I'm, I'm already just thinking, probably 2022 before I do anything like that. Yeah, at the earliest. Yeah, that's right. what I said. Things are really expensive. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah no we were looking. Yeah, I was looking at some stuff the other, uh, the other day, and I was just like, "Let me just compare, like, because mm. I had like paperwork of stuff that we'd done before. I was like, this has literally been put up by forty percent, yeah, just because people are starting to just trickle back into doing stuff. Yeah. Let's put all the prices up. Yeah, but I get that people they're doing that for a reason because they are they need to recoup some money. But I mean, there's there's a profiteering argument. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they they're trying to recoup costs, and that you know restaurants are fucked. Restaurants, pubs, they've all fucked the price up a little bit. Didn't yeah. They? I don't mind. I'd expect it a little bit, but some people are taking the piss. Oh, there's a lot of people taking the <laughs> piss. Yeah, there's a lot. But it's their own morals or something. It's not. I think that if they do it too much, that'll, that'll backfire. Oh, 100%. If just they just alienate if they people. Don't, um, if they don't almost repeal it and go back to normal, then people will see through that. Yeah. And people will expect it as well. Yeah. As, a, as a nation, we expect the best value, don't we? Yeah. That's what we want. People are a bit more smarter now, though, generally, about stuff and how things how like much things think cost. So. And yeah. People research things now, I think, a bit more than they used to. Well, the internet's a wonderful thing, isn't yeah, it? And read reviews of stuff. And yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons car sales have done well. So you used to talk to the old guys uh, who were obviously doing it before the internet. They'd tell them anything. Your <laughs> point <laughs> yeah, 0.9 litre Fiesta would beat, beat a Lamborghini <laughs> off the market. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you'd written it down, so I'd definitely exactly. believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as the internet came along, they knew yeah. the customers come in knowing more about that yeah. car than the salesman, because the salesman and literally couldn't care less. The worst thing for, for like someone, what you did was like they pretty much know the bottom line of what they yeah. should be able to get this car for. Yeah. So you're already an uphill battle straight away. So you mm -hmm. can't, you couldn't bullshit people as much. No. <laughs> no. I'm not saying it was built on bullshit, but there was a certain amount of smoke and mirrors kind of stuff. To oh, 100% there was. Yeah. It, it very definitely there was in, in car sales, and that's well, it's why they started to regulate finance. Because <laughs> <they, laughs> yeah. they were a nightmare. <laughs> I always used to get told, um, so we had a business manager at Willoughby, so you just wheel off all the finance people to them, and, and they basically do it. But um, some of the older guys like to do it themselves, and they always used to just quote flat rates. I was like, why are you just doing flat rates in APR? Because like, they couldn't figure it out. <laughs> they just couldn't figure it out and they didn't understand it so they just didn't do it 
they just made things up and when they sort of put the finance deal through to the company they just rewrote it in, in a flat rate and they get paid <laughs> loads more commission because yeah i always wondered though when i was in there because you ever like when you've been buying a car you're like so like i've got to a point where he's knocked a bit off now he's adamant that he can't go anywhere then he goes to stick his manager oh suddenly we've got more money off it's like it just keeps I've knocked two grand off this car so far. But after being told four times that you can't go any lower than that, like how much can you really afford to sell <laughs> this car for? It depends <laughs> when you go. So they get bonuses. Like Peugeot used to do something called Unit One bonuses, and every like quarter they'd come through and the sales manager would give you a sheet, and like they've got a shitload of 307s at Sheerness, so they're just going to give you an extra three grand to do stuff with. So you've got another three grand of profit that you can you can use mm. reasonably. So ridiculous amounts of money for their enraged <laughs> fiesta <laughs> <laughs> that they thought was worth five grand and, and stuff like that so yeah, yeah there's, there's always something going on i mean I've, to be fair it's been a long time and pe- the people i know that still sell cars seem to enjoy it i think certainly the world is quite different now what other, wh- what other i was going to ask what other business have you dabbled in uh bags yeah I've, i did write this down i'm sure you i remember you mentioned that to yeah me one time. but yeah bags i like bags <laughs> um, what kind of bags? Um, the what the Lake District Bag Company's wax bags, wax canvas bags. So they look like something out of World War One, right. um, but they're, they're actually really cool. They're just natural uh, products. They're natural bags. So they're roll top bags made out of wax canvas. Ultimately, was this another one of your? I think I'm going to start a bag company. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd done it. I'd like. I'd. Please don't judge me. I really like bags, and um, I buy bags like big rucksacks all sorts of stuff i don't know why i just like a different i've got a different bag for every day of the week and i know <laughs> i know what this is making me look like but uh, you know they've not got like sparkles and stuff on they're actually like bags useful yeah 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 useful um but i just saw an opportunity i just thought that it would be a nice thing to do and it's something that you know is made and finished in the lake district um it's just an opportunity. It's just another opportunity to create something that might develop into something. And it's it was never about doing that. It's never about making loads and loads of money. That was about building the brand and then executing it and just passing it on to someone else. So what 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 is it? What is phase is that in? What's happened to it? That's been been selling stuff. It's we've pulled it down to redo the website at the minute. So it's done well. Um, they're not cheap. What's the company called? The Lake District Bag Company. Is it still yeah. online? Yeah. Oh, okay, right. I yeah. do remember. Look, I think I did remember looking. It's up on right. Instagram and stuff still, right. um, but we're just redoing the website at the minute because um, cool. it, it went really well. It's easy. To, you make more money out of a bag than you can a bag of coffee. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. I prefer coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're just really nice, really robust, kind of old school bags. Right. Um, and they just lo- they're really they're really Lake District, to be honest. Um, they're just really. Well, I'm supposed to say they're really nice. It's kit, but <laughs> no, um, I remember looking. I'm going, oh, they're good, good quality. It's just some, again, it's something I thought, yeah, that, yeah, why not? Let's try <laughs> it. Let's uh, let's give it a crack. And and actually, it went down really, really well. And the next phase of it is to try and sort of in, interact with influencers and stuff like that. And, and really, yeah, there's a lot of out, you've obviously you've got to take your pick of really outdoors. But there's some really great uh, other bag companies in the Lake District. They don't leverage the national park. Um, mm. But there's some really great. I mean, it's expected, isn't it, out here? And mm. it was just about, to be honest with you, it was the decision that made it is when I looked on um, one two three road to see if the domain was available. Ah. Um, and because it was, it was like, well, why haven't, why hasn't anyone done this? This is yeah. You've got you could tap into loads of like outdoorsy people who've got loads of followers. Mm. To actually, can you Google on inst- on Instagram a guy called Fell Foodie? Yeah, yeah. Have you heard of him? Yep. I'm talking to him about coming on here. He cr- like does walking up massive fells. He's exploded, isn't he? Though, yeah, and he, but then he cooks cooks yeah. meals, proper meals at the top of the. I watched top of the on fells. Instagram. He made a katsu curry on like. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, pepper or something. Um, but uh, he's been on TV. Like I saw him on TV. And I was like, it says Helvellyn or wherever it was. I was like, he's up here. He's, he's in Cumbria. Oh, look. Yeah. That's wh- when you that's when you've had a massive walk like that. That's what you need when you get up there. Yeah, why not <laughs> just make a three course meal? <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen it, like he takes loads of people up there. I don't know who this old guy. Apparently, he's a legend. That old guy. Mm. Can't click on the glass. 
sort of from the bottom corner. I'll tell you what his name is. Josh Naylor. There we go. Apparently he's a legend in the outdoor pursuits. Oh, oh okay. So yeah, this this guy is doing very well. So he's yeah representing Cumbria. So I thought Harrison. That's his name. Harrison. Yeah, it's making me hungry. Yeah. But that is a good idea. It is such ultimate a good reward idea. for like going yeah. up some massive like cat bells or something. Well the thing is, like you, you do it and even it most people that took food up will take it. The up. other thing is he used to be like huge. Like his lifestyle he's changed his whole oh, okay. lifestyle. He hasn't always been like this. That's part of his story. Oh, uh, okay. But then if I don't know how he's ended up being a like a chef, basically, <laughs> at the same time. I don't know if that was part of the plan from the beginning of his journey, but like one day he just decided I'm not happy with myself. I'm going to yeah, change everything. Do and he's ended up <laughs> doing that. But yeah, I saw him on TV. And I was like, I know oh, he something did, um, on my ass one night. Kendall Mountain Festival as well, I think. Did yes. Something with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think in, certainly in the outdoor world, if you do something with Kendall Mountain Festival, you kind of you kind of made it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's another market for you to tap into. But yeah, your coffee as well, that, that could work with many different types of people. I, lo <laughs> I, I looked at doing something for the outdoor world, but there's too many people doing it. And you could, yeah, yeah. Th to be fair, there is a lot of because of the explosion in in sort of drop shipping and, and white labeling. There's there's a lot of coffee companies out there now. Mm, um, yeah. The side hustle thing and did you look into like your competition in terms of Cumbrian based coffee companies? Yeah, th there wasn't any one small that you know that would be a direct competitor. There's obviously Farrers and people like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that are out there, but um, there's a few pops up in in the last um, like Carvetti and stuff like that. They've mm. Decent coffee. Um, there's a few about, but it, coffee's that sort of thing where there's always space for something else. Mm. Um, yeah, people are always looking for something yeah. different. And there's always someone being forced into drinking coffee by their mate who's just got into it and they've got their AeroPress out and, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doing it all. <laughs> there's always someone new to it. So yeah. you have to access them. But Amrit will get spun up again, as I said, but I think it will get spun up in a way that it will be supplying gyms rather than end user. Okay. So it'll be more like kilo bags for the coffee machine. By it, like selling it in bulk rather than yeah. individually. Yeah. It'll ser it's certainly the coffee of behind the noise, that's for damn sure. <laughs> so if you do, we'll, we'll buy some off here. But it definitely will happen. It definitely will, yeah. I think uh, I just think that the model will be better for... A lot of gyms now have their own coffee machines and stuff. A lot of gyms have their own coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, again, something that we've looked at doing. Yeah. Um, it's Amway branded, but it's got the gym's name on it. So yeah. So you can do all sorts of things now um that's what you you always have to like have a usp don't you you have to find something yeah. that's unique i mean com some, something with cumbria is always unique anyway yeah like sets you apart from most of the big brands mm -hmm. something more not, well, it's not local but it's like i don't know the cumbria is a very unique place isn't it to be associated with it, it depends where you are in cumbria isn't it like, everyone's no different. but i mean as a perception from other people who are oh, not yeah. in cumbria it's a very unique thing well people to like some people it's like a different country isn't it? <laughs> like <laughs> well, the further draw. south you go, they think, it, they think it goes Manchester, Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> I get really annoyed by people talking about the northwest and what they actually mean is Bolton. Or Manchester, <laughs> which yeah. is tech, it is, but it's the very it, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's to south us. northwest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's almost Midlands, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's closer to Nottingham than it is to Carlisle. Yeah. <laughs> so, I get, yeah, I don't know. That's one of my things. I get really wound up. And I'm not even northern, like... I know what people up here are like. Like, I'm from south of Shaft, so I'll never be Cumbrian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could live here for the rest of my life. I could die here and I'd still never be Yeah, I've been here for 20 odd years. I'd call it home, but I'll never be Cumbrian. No. <laughs> but I don't mind. No. That's but fine. It's almost like, uh, like Wales are, are the same. Like, my auntie used to live in Wales now, and they've lived in the same village, tiny little village. Weirdly, it's the next village along from where Charles used to take the miller when they were sniffing around for it. So. <laughs> they were sniffing around. <laughs> um, but they they still to this day get asked if they're on holiday when they go to the <laughs> shops in town. If, if there's someone new in the shop, they still get asked if they're on holiday. Or if they get like a a, a new postman, they'll ask if the house is an Airbnb or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's really really weird. Still, local shop for local people. It's really weird down here. Yeah, but it's a tiny little village. It's uh, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I do, I do like Cumbria though. I think Cumbria's home for me now. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it feels like home. It took a while. Of it took a bit of getting used to. 
because I think if you say to someone else who you're at three, they know about, then that's probably <laughs> four. That's probably four. <laughs> yeah. And they're talking to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I do like it. I, d- I really do like it. Yeah. Coming from the city in Newcastle, it was quite an adjustment for me mm. when I was like 15, 16. Quite an adjustment from like yeah. the city where you can go out all the time and everything's always open. <laughs> so now like, yeah. there's, there's a, if you want to get here, there's a bus on a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. It, you get used to it though, don't you? I was in Nottingham not that long ago. Uh, I went back and um, I went absolutely mental. <laughs> it was amazing. I could go out at two o'clock in the morning and get food. <laughs> I found yeah, yeah. The Chinese supermarket was amazing. <laughs> and all of these memories came flooding back. And then within about 48 hours, I was like, fucking hell, I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's way too many people. I sat there having breakfast one morning with some guy that uh, he was in full camouflage and he basically did a break dance all the way down the street. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for me to go home. <laughs> it's time. It's time to go. It's time to go. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's time for us to go home. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Mark. No, it's thank been a you. pleasure. It's been a, it's only been eight months in the making, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or a year, depending on how you look well, at it. Thank you. I, I, I told you I couldn't make it interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been it's been fun. No, I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, no, thank you. Have you done anything like this before? <laughs> I did a, a podcast about Brexit um, <laughs> for the chambers. Um, just before oh yeah, I did that. They, I remember they did have their own podcast for a while. Yeah, they did. A, they did a bit, and it was ba- it was recorded in, in in like one of the back offices on a mobile. Julian phone Whittles. Was, yes, he did. I remember him. Um, love Julian. Um, before I start slating it, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just weird. Um, Brexit at the time was just such a, a hot topic. Um, yeah. Well, they were just interviewing just people from different different business sectors or local businesses. Yeah, talking I about did their I issues and stuff. And uh, yeah, ultimate. So I think I did like the last one of that because like they put me on. They asked me if I'd do a, a Brexit helpline for a month. Right. Um, government funded it, and they wanted at least two people sitting in the office waiting with bated breath for phone calls from businesses asking how they need to include paperwork and stuff like that, and and what what the changes were. More to the point. And in a month, Lots I got of changes. Like loads and loads of changes, but in a month, I got three phone calls. <laughs> right. So people weren't that bothered. No, <laughs> no. But we did. Especially we not at the beginning, because people were just. It was just. People were just lost. They were mm. just. Well, it's and, it's and like we said, people didn't think it was going to be that long. True. So they weren't panicking too much at the beginning. True. I d- I th- Brexit, Brexit was weird, though, wasn't it? You, oh, you Brexit couldn't, was. You couldn't just. You just couldn't win. It doesn't matter no. what you said. Like I did the did the the chat with Bre- uh, Julian, and that was. Whichever side of the table you want, it got it got some heat, shall mm. we say? Yeah. And then I did a I did a presentation for their other advisors. So the chambers have got quite a few contractors like me, as you'd imagine. And they asked me to do a presentation to them all about what might change. And ultimately, I present for a living, and it didn't really bother me that much because we had a system, and I got and I was absolutely bobbing it going in there because it was Brexit. And again, me being me, I like to poke things a little bit. I put European flag in the presentation almost like subliminal messaging <laughs> <laughs> and it was definitely the wrong audience <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, right. there was 50% of the room were not impressed it was quite a tough mm. tough afternoon um, yeah, it was what's going to change pretty much everything or maybe nothing <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows nobody let's knows. see let's I know see I've noticed falls. some things are getting um, ta- as I say extra tax on things and I'm always yeah. like that things in Europe yeah. that would never exist it's starting to hit now and subsidies so a lot of the stuff for the chambers, like I mentioned earlier, was some schemes. It's EU funding, so right. all that sort, all of that business support through yeah. the chambers and the FSB and stuff like that will disappear because the EU won't fund it. Yeah, uh, lots of things are going to change that people didn't realise were mm. going to happen because of the Brexit. See, I was always, I voted to remain, but I was always like, how can anyone be so sure? There were so many people who were like. So sure that we should leave. So sure that we should stay. Mm. Like, how? How do you know what? How this is going to play out? How can you be so sure? Mm. Exactly. What? Well, nobody did. No. And I, I still have a thing, and I, and I'm sorry if this gets some heat on on your podcast, but they shouldn't have given the general public a vote on it because nobody understood what what it actually would look like. Yeah, they just started um, using keywords to try and yeah, like exactly. immigration. 
Yeah, things like that. It's gone well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they were able to do it so cut and dry with like a 52% vote one way. Yeah. Like, if it's going to be something so monumental, why we not have a, it as a bigger a, majority? Big majority? That's mm. such a fine line to play with. Yeah. Like, yeah. how can you say, right, yep, that's it, that's done. 52% of people said so. Yeah. Reasons behind all this that we don't know about that just, they just pass the legislation. Yeah, that's enough, let's just do it. Mm. There's reasons that we still don't know. Way outside our pay grade. So. Yeah, we're not, we're not I mean, it's done now, so we've just got to deal with it. And, and it's still gradually... It will happen years in the next now. five years. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna be, we're gonna find out. So far, I haven't really. Fi- what, uh, have you anything good from Brexit so far? Not really. Yeah, just nothing. No, all, <laughs> all negative no. so far. <laughs> Complications. Yeah, and just annoyances. Complicated. I don't. I don't so think far. anything positive will come out of it. I'm. I don't even aim obviously. I don't genuinely don't believe anything positive will come out of it. Main people I spoke to who were against, uh, who wanted to leave, were older people, who it's d- just a different generation. Yeah. I know a lot of younger people either weren't that bothered, they didn't really know, mm. or they just wanted to, to stay because they didn't want things to change too much from how they are. Yeah. Which I could understand. Yeah. Which is why I voted for Remain. I think there's a lot to be said for the status quo, though, isn't there? Mm. And I, know I, thought, I thought it would just be a bit too much of an unknown to just yeah, leave something that we've had for God yeah. knows how many years. Yeah. It's, it, it's going to take the next five, six years to, to really all come out of the wash. Um, I think we became a bit of a laughing stock as well, didn't we? Oh yeah. As if we weren't already. Yeah, we're like well we just made a bad situation worse. Well, yeah. the problem that we sent a politician to negotiate it, they sent a businessman. Yeah. So we got absolutely shredded at every turn. Yeah. And it was just never going to end well. I mean, look <laughs> at look at the fisheries; they're getting absolutely oh, nailed yeah. to the wall. Yeah. Um, and part of their big campaign was that we'll have our fishing rights back, we'll have our waters back. That's not gone well. No. In any sense of the word. Yeah. So they're pulling more out of Coroma Harbour than they are out of the North Sea. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Um, it's just crazy. Um, but everyone's entitled to an opinion, and I'm happy with that. You know, yeah. the w- majority won. Fine. Let's just deal with it now. It was a very slim majority. Yeah. Well. yeah. A bit like uh, a lot of the elections recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That just shows you that no one's really like. People are just so in the middle. It's like. Yeah, I don't I really but I think people are tired of it now as well. Because there's so mm. many, because we went through a few years with loads of elections and wins, mm. um, and loads of votes and stuff, and it just everyone's tired of it because nobody trusts politicians. Yeah. Even less so now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I didn't want to bring him low. into it, but Hancock. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but that kind of stuff's been going on. Oh, it's been going on for years. But it's like, I'm glad that he has been sacked for the for the breach of code rule. I mean, yeah. if like Joe from accounts has an affair outside of work, or even in work, that's not a sackable offence. It, well, it, d- it depends, but um, no, you're right. It it's not really. It no, it's, it's not affecting him having to do his job. But if he broke rules, if he but if he broke rules about work, that's fair enough. Yeah. So it's two, kind of oh, two separate things, but yeah. it's just yeah. Oh, yeah, I would like to have been right now. <laughs> Man, some of the memes. I would have liked to have been it ever, but. <laughs> well, no, to be fair. Yeah, I was looking at some of the memes yesterday. They're brutal, but hilarious. Some of it. I, d- I want to know how people have the time. I want to know. People are fast. Yeah. Like, within Second. a minute of something <laughs> breaking, there's a meme. I'm like, someone, I'm in, I'm like, someone sent me a meme already. I'm like, wow. The, the German, I, I've already had, within minutes of the final whistle, I got one of German flags over seats on a plane. <laughs> within, literally within minutes. <laughs> so some people must have them BX ready. Yeah. yeah, some people are well, thinking they're about ready as they were. They're thinking about well, I mean, m- some people have just been waiting for Matt's hanker to slip up for a long time, so oh they've yeah. had them ready. But <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. when this came out, like, oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, so we've attacked Americans. Yeah. Um, what else are we? We're doing well. We're we've doing now well. done Brexit. Should we, what about <laughs> Scottish independence for another week? Shall we do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we want to go there. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I love Scotland. I do. I love the way they have to do everything Scottish, though. Like, they yeah. have to turn everything British or everything that we do to do differently. Yeah. It's like, what are they doing? Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this instead. <laughs> but it's the same for the Welsh First Minister, wasn't it, as well? He, yeah. he just listened to Boris and went, well, we're going to have a weekend. Yeah, it was like the Scott dates. Are they going to do that? Well, we'll do the week after. Yeah. <laughs> but then he's attacked Boris in, in the news this week, hasn't he, for yeah. not considering Wales. So, hang on a minute. <laughs> you waited for Boris to say what he was going to do, and then went, no, well, no, fuck you. We're going to do this. <laughs> So did Sturgeon. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel like this is another can of worms. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, Tim, it's been 
fun talking to you. I really enjoyed it. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Quite a nice. No, it's a pleasure. Uh, as I say, people, your name came up, and I love the coffee. So thank you. I'm glad we've done it. Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you.